So today we've got on Helen Wood, author of A Man's World. If you're interested in her book and her socials, YouTube channel, new channel, she's going to be doing her own podcast. All the links are in the description box below this video. Helen won Big Brother, which is a TV show here in the UK. So before we get into your story, what is Big Brother about? Big Brother is a top and bottom of it is a social experiment. So best way to describe it is I always say to people, it's like being a rat in a laboratory and they kind of <laughs> <laughs> literally, and people actually thought I was a rat, <laughs> but they like put you in, the, so you're in a house and you basically test it on. It's a social experiment. They do things to wind, the producers do things to wind you up. They do things to yeah. test your patience. Um, you have a budget as well, like a shopping budget. So, and if you don't win a task, you're on chickpeas for like a week. Um, yeah, it's a social experiment. Can you leave the house? No, no, it's literally like, there's, there's fire exits everywhere and there's a diary room and you are told that you can leave at any point if you wanted to. Um, hence why I've never understood why people climb over walls. Um, but we'll get on to that in a bit. Um, yeah, so there is like 12 fire exits and you can leave if you wanted to. But no, you're completely, you're completely cut off from the real world. It's amazing. Yeah. Like you've no phone, you've no contact with the outside world at all whatsoever. Um, whereas a lot of reality, a lot of real other reality shows and game shows like that, they can actually talk to the real world. No, it's not. You don't get it. Or unless you're a celebrity. Celebrities get different um, perks because obviously they're different people. When you say celebrities, so like say like Paddy's been on any of the King of the Gypsies. Yeah. So would he be able to leave if he needed to? They get special treatment. They get um, they can kind of through the grapevine. I've heard this anyway, and I have spoken to celebrities that have been on there. I say celebrity, like uh, very lightly. Um, and they can, they, they just get different things. Like um, they get, they don't really get put on rations because they're celebrities. Um, and then, but he would be able to leave and then probably walk back in. Whereas if someone in the civilian, I think they called it, civilian. That's bullshit that though, isn't it? They should be able to get seen. You go on the it's show, so, you it's should. It's so annoying. It is. It was really annoying. I mean, there was... For me, like, going on there, you're equal. Everyone's the same and you deal with the same thing. But I went on twice. I went back on in 2015. Huge mistake. So I won in 2014. Everything was absolutely great. And then I went back on the year after. Not so great. I got put in a house with a bunch of dunces with no personality whatsoever. So I was climbing the walls because all these people were just dying to be famous. Um, so they were so scared of saying anything and they were proper working the camera. So they never they never gave out opinions in case, you know, the public disliked what they said. They were just caught, they were all like, oh, let's all be happy and positive and oh, fuck up. <laughs> it was really annoying. Um, but there was one girl that was on when I was on and she, we, were, we went back on called The Legends, which cringed me to death. But one of the girls that I went back on with actually took this word really seriously, that she was a legend, like actually oh. saw herself as like a Marilyn Monroe kind of figure or something. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. And like I said, like you're not allowed to eat if you fail the tasks. And she said she was lactose intolerant, right? So lactose intolerant, I think we're all in agreement, means no dairy at yeah. all. Yeah. So um, anyway, we were on this chickpea diet and this box arrived. And I was like, what's in this box? So I'm looking in it and everyone's shying around this girl because she just cries over anything. And everyone's like, oh, it's it's Nikki's box. And I was like, it's got chocolate in it. She's lactose intolerant. So I pulled it. So I got called a bully for this because I was like, I thought you were lactose intolerant. And she was like, I can only eat some things. I went, that's like me saying I'm vegetarian, but I eat cattle on a Monday. Yeah. What are you on about? There's no such thing. Like you got oh. Mars bars in your bag for God's yeah. sake. <laughs> oh, so annoying. So, like, you know how sensitive um 
like the UK public have gone like it's ridiculous you can't say anything without somebody saying it meant this it meant that you're a bully you know you're trying to break someone's self-esteem it's like well, not really. I'm just stating a fact that they're a knob and they've done something wrong <laughs> and that doesn't make sense. That's not bullying somebody. But Even if, it, if you say it to a white person and you say exactly the same things to a black person, you're a racist. You're a racist. It does pathetic, you, you know are. what I mean? I know. Well, I got branded a racist because of that show because, you know, as I said about the fire exits. Yeah. So I got into massive, massive, like... Um, a massive ding dong with a guy that was in there who happens to be black. I don't care if he's black, blue, polka dot, all the colours of the rainbow. He was a tosser, no matter what, no matter what colour he was. Yeah. Um, and he he pro he made a beeline for me. Um, I'm not like an, I'm not really a huggy kind of person. I don't like being touched. I don't like people invading my personal space. And he made a point of constantly doing it. Like, I don't even hug my best mm. friend and stuff. Mm. I hate all that, like, oh, I love you and all this shit. Like, mm. no, just stay there and whatever, we can talk. And he, cut, he he knew what he was doing. He worked the public. Very clever. So I was, like, sat one day putting my makeup on. And he walked in the room and he was like, um, can, I, can I have a hug? I was on my own. He went, can I have a hug? I went, no. But all this, imagine this, the public watching. I went, no. And he was like, oh, you're such a nice queen. Just give just give me a hug. And I went, I don't want to hug you. So all that being played to the public was like, Makes why is she so mean. cold? Yeah. yeah, but I don't want to hug you. I don't like you. So why would I want to hug you anyway? And um, anyway, oh, it just ended up in a bit of a disaster. He he turned around and said that I would... Ma so we were doing a task and he said that I would marry for money, which is fine, whatever. I wouldn't marry for money, by the way, but... I would. Um, and I'm married. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get... <laughs> <laughs> but he said, that I'd marry, he said that I'd marry for money and whatever, but then... I he started frothing at the mouth because he was getting really angry and I I I just found that funny and I was like you your um, straight jackets in the store cupboard go and get it on and he just went uh, I can't believe you're a mother you need your throat slitting so I lost I I lost, yeah but they never played what he said you just throat so slitting I, so I turned around and said you look like a fucking rapist. And you look like a murderer, and he only played. She played them. No, said. that's yeah. terrible. Oh, that is down yeah. dirty. That is. I know. Shame on you. I know. Well, then he and then he climbed over the wall the next morning, and he was threatening all kinds of things about his mental health and all this. Um, and Big Brother did this big announcement like someone had died. It was really bizarre, and I was like. Can I just go and have a shower now? I'm not really asked because they were like, Brian, <laughs> Brian's climbing over the wall, and everyone was crying, you know, like he was jumping off, you know, like a cliff or something. Yeah. I went. There's twelve fire exits, and there's a diary room, and he's chose to scale a wall. Does that not tell you what kind of person he is? Anybody? Hello. <laughs> so there's my rant. Anyway, can you tell I'm not over this? Yeah, I know, yeah. So the truth is out. Helen is not a racist. No. You got the no. full story here. What are these tasks then? You have to eat bugs or anything? Yeah, there's loads of stuff. So it's um I did one, oh, this was really embarrassing, and my best friend put Big Brother up to this. They said, um, get her on like a farting task or something or a shitting task or something, and I was like, so that I had to go around and pretend and make everyone believe that I'd shit myself and fart. I was farting and I was, it was killing me. I was like, cause there was a guy in there that I like, I kind of liked and me and him were kind of like, you know, get not getting it on in like a sexual way, but we were like kissing and whatever. That sounds so like, you know, like primary school, but whatever. Um, but I had to do this task in front of all these. And my best mate has put them all, put like big brother up to this saying, oh, she'll fucking hate it. Get her to do that. And I also absolutely despise balloons. I hate balloons. Um, like, they go through me and they put me in a room and I had to sit on this chair and clowns were going round popping balloons in my face. So Mental torture, that, isn't Yeah, it? there was loads of Did stuff. Did you have to fill out a questionnaire so they knew about your balloon fear? I didn't put it, but she told them. Oh, because I thought if I... get stitches, I though. thought if I put that I don't like balloons... 
then they'll click onto it and they'll think, oh, we'll do something we'll with do balloons. Something with balloons. But they've rung up. They stayed. They were like that with my best friend. They kept ringing her up, like saying, you know, what should we do? And she was like, she hates balloons. Get her in a room with a load of balloons. She'll go mad. I was like, I came out and I went, can you believe they put me in a room with balloons? And she was like, I know, I told them. It's like, you bitch. What a lovely face she is. I know. <laughs> I know. So how did you act like you shat yourself? Um, I just had to kind of like say that like I had like shit myself and like make a noise and stuff like that. Make you get some chocolates because yeah. that's also intelligent. <laughs> yeah. You repeat the noise. <laughs> I'm not doing the noise. That's how <laughs> that's how uneasy I am about that topic. <laughs> Imagine like someone there you quite fancy see that and you go. That's what I mean. I was like, really, like, I'm on TV. Well, this is a thing, right? So obviously, even though girls don't technically poo, but like I got so ill because I wouldn't go to the toilet. And then I find they, they were like, you need to go, otherwise you're gonna have to go to the doctors and whatever. And it just it did my head in like I was so embarrassed. I put a sock over the camera because there's a camera in the toilet. God, oh they crazy. fucking announced it. They turned around and went, can Helen please remove the sock from the toilet? I was like, oh my God. Like, Everyone what are you doing to me? Yeah. It even sounds like I'm like playing with myself or yeah. like, or like I'm doing that. I was like, they actually killed me off. Um, but yeah. So is there a dating component to the show? People no, get off no, of each other. Not like Love Island, but they do. Like I, I did. Um, I'd just come out of a relationship and it was kind of a revenge thing what I did. I started see it's like seeing this really good looking guy on TV and I knew oh, what a revenge for I knew that is. I knew brilliant, he was in a he was in a prison cell watching um, get a I, actually, so I actually I actually told him for this this sounds horrendous but it's, it's in my, my it's in my it it's in my book now anyway so I'm not fussed but I kept the lid on this but I hadn't told Big Brother I, I said I said I've been single for three years and then um I told him that I would be he was like don't let Big Brother change you he cheated on me in all sorts yeah. like by the way but I didn't let I didn't tell him I knew I thought, fuck you, I'm just going to go on TV and humiliate you. On That's a better than a day John Lester, isn't it? Well, he humiliated me on a smaller scale. I just kind of Up did it. him over a bit more, yeah. So. Fair play to you. Yeah, and that was that. Hell of no scurry, like a woman scurry. It's true, there's nothing like a woman scurry at all. So you've been filmed at all times, even all in the times. toilet. Yeah, but, but celebrities don't get filmed. Which so, is bullshit. Why do we get filmed having a shit, but celebrities don't? That's terrible. <sighs> there should be a little bit of privacy Who's for God's sake. Show do they show people? Why, why people well, the lads used to I, I, I didn't really get into it, to be honest like, with you. The lads used to, like, obviously need to do that. Yeah. And, like, they'd have to be doing that in front of a camera. And did they show any of that on the TV? No. But they showed shagging, but... Um, How far can you go if you meet someone, then? Well, the, wherever you want, whatever you want to do. When the but show's they shagging, is it just like but a cover celebrities over? have shagged and they've, uh, they don't show it, but on ours, um, people shagged on ours and they showed it. And I sneak, it's actually on my Instagram, this. Oh, my God. So uh, I was, like, really close to the guy that was, like, shagging this bird. And I've gone to sneak under the bed. I wanted to pull a prank on them. Yeah. And fucking shit my tooth on the bed. It was, in the, it was in the dark. It was in the dark. And I'm like, this fucking skulking around the room. And I went like, went down to, like, I don't even know what I was even going to fucking do, to be honest, thinking about it. What was I even doing? And then I fucking banged my tooth on the finger. That's a little close. Not a little. That's karma, but... isn't it, for disturbing someone's hanky panky? Did you know in advance who you're going to run the show with? No. No? No, you've no idea. So you fancying this guy was completely spontaneous, Donald. Did you premeditatedly think, I'm going to just do a no. revenge thing on, on no. my ex? I actually, like, as much as I'd like to sit here and say, um, I'm going to, like, go on, go on TV and fuck him over and whatever. Yeah. I didn't. I, it was a getaway mechanism. And then when I actually first start, started to get to know the guy... Mm. I felt real. he said something about how he fancied me in a task and I went all frigid. I was like, Ooh, like shit. Because I'd not been with anyone for yeah. like six, like five years. What I'd just task been, was that? It was like, um, it was talking about each other and like who was the best in what quality and stuff. 
and like who who was your type and he turned around and said Helen and everyone was like Ooh, which is like my worst nightmare situation so I was like I just like like I couldn't cope with it it was horrible but then I thought I do actually think you're quite fit you went to a but, shy school girl for a second yeah just for a second <laughs> <laughs> it happens from time to time what appealed to you <clears throat> about him um, he was really good looking and he was dead chilled, but like most people, off camera, he showed his true well no, he showed his true colours on there. So I became I became a very hated figure in in England. Like I actually thought I would need a bulletproof vest coming off the show. That's how much I thought I was hated. This is the one you won? Yeah. Um and then he started to come away from me a bit and I think he thought he was going to win. So, and I had no idea I was going to win because I'm such a gobshite and I just kind of say whatever I'm thinking. I thought there's no way a character like me would win. Never had any idea of it at all. And because um, he was a bit of a cool cat that sat on the fence, I think he saw that, he, I think he thought he was going to win. So he started to like move away from me. Like, you know, like I was like the naughty kid that he needs to move away from. They're all fakes and snakes for And then I won. Anyway. So I was like, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> to all of them. So you said you thought you were the most hated person. Yeah. You said that on... Oh, no, I still was. On like, season two, you said you, you said why, the, what happened with yeah. the guy. Why, what did you do on season one that you think made the people hate you? Just like, my, just being myself, I think it takes a lot of... If you're a sensitive person and you don't have the ability to kind of look beyond why someone's a certain way, then you really would not like me as a person. Um, and liars don't like me. Fake people don't like me. Like people in the house who were fake. Like there was a woman, there was a girl in the house, right? And I could, she just drove me. You couldn't, she said she was Catholic. She was strict Catholic. She, you weren't allowed to swear around her. You were absolutely not allowed to talk about sex. And I thought, fuck you. We're on an adult show. If I want to talk about shagging and I want to talk about getting pissed or whatever and I want to swear, I'm doing it all regardless of you. Like, yeah. And everyone was, so we'd all be having a drink. She wouldn't drink, of course. And everyone was like, oh, Helen, just Danielle's there. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. Don't come on an adult show if you've got a problem with talking about adult topics. You've been real, aren't you? Yeah, like why are you one here? But it was all fake. So I, I so she, she did it. She slipped up one night. She had a drink, and um, she started acting proper slutty towards one of the guys in there. And I thought, you're a, you're a sly slag on the sly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're the worst kind of slag. Instead of just admitting that you like a bit of sex and whatever else, you're actually sly. You're proper sly about it, and Do you it make it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, oh, it was fantastic. This was a fucking great day that I'll never ever forget. So she was acting all like that, and I was saying, "Do you know what? She's a horny bitch on the sly. Oh. She really is. It's all fake." And we did a task called tr um, "Truth or Lie." And this was, whereas I, I couldn't give a shit, so I was sat there and I thought, they've come in and it's all about, all the researchers have gone finding stuff out about yeah. you. Why would you go on a show if you had secrets that could come out? You wouldn't do it, would you, if you had a brain? And um, obviously everyone knew everything about me anyway, so I thought, I don't have any secrets. I'm not asked. If anything comes out, it's a lie. So I was sat there, like, quite comfortable and... Uh, her, her turn comes round. Is it true that uh, Danielle is part of a um, adults' work, something or other, something to do with stripping and men's entertainment? And I was like, well, well, well. So it turned out all along that she was like, well, she still doesn't, she didn't admit it to this day, but she was on escort sites. Oh. Like squirting fucking cream all over her tits and stuff. I was like, ah! Oh, you bit. But I loved it. We were sat there. I was pissing myself. And a, a girl who I got really close with, Bianca, who's just wild, she just went, Danielle, you fucking honey bitch. I was like, yes. Yeah. And she, but she went crying to the producers. She was threatening the producers to sue. Sue on what grounds? They're your pictures. Like... Can't be asked for people like that. I don't know why you'd come on fake like that anyway. It's like... And then she got me arrested. Did yeah. she? Yeah. <laughs> I went to a function. This is why I don't do any of these functiony kind of places where people are. 
Um, and she uh, she wrote stuff about my son on... Uh, she doesn't know my son. Nobody knows my son. But she wrote about me being a mum on Twitter. And I thought, you've overstepped the mark, though. Yeah. Like, why are you bringing kids into it? Just like me or for you. Yeah, yeah. Say so whatever you want about me. It. But then I went to this function in, in Essex. And she, um, she started walking up to me. And my best friend went, oh, my God, Danielle's walking over, Helen. And I went, tell her to move now. Like, and obviously, we're at a fashion show. And she just went, um, I thought it'd be I, I thought it'd be nice to come over and say hello. I went, Oh, did you? And I just like doused her with my drink, grabbed hers, and I went, I'll have that before you can do it to me, and threw it over her. <laughs> she fell on the floor and grabbed her face and told the bouncers I'd thrown acid in her face. Oh because you know, because I always carry like an you know, a spur bile of acid around <laughs> in my bags in my bag with me. How'd you do? So I got like nearly my arm broke getting dragged out of this place, and then I got arrested. But it wasn't too bad because the police liked me. They got me a pasty and a hot chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> so, I clearly knew she was a dick. They must have watched the show. So do you think that there's been a backlash against political correctness now and people like people are down to earth, keeping it real like you, sharp-witted, charismatic? They were, that would... That's why I love podcasts. That's why I think they're the way to go because, do you know what? Keep... Keep your TV programs, keep your fake reality shows that are all scripted for snowflakes. Yeah, keep it real. Keep it. If that's what they want, then fine. But I love the idea of the podcast. It's for me, it's still a very new thing, like coming on something like this. But I love it because you can just sit there and at the end of the day, if someone again, if someone's watching this and they don't like what I'm saying, they're clearly just gonna turn it off. They're not gonna start ringing fucking people, they're not gonna start trying to ring you to complain about me. They're just going to turn me off and write a comment saying, I didn't like her. Who's next? We do have a department of complaints and the head of the oh department God. of complaints, if you do want to launch a complaint, the head of the department of complaints <laughs> is wild, man. <laughs> <laughs> How many warnings do I get? <laughs> oh, you can have as many as you want. <laughs> it's the people that we're watching if they complain. I'd like to I'm give sorry. a big shout out to James English. Done a lot of work with him my podcast brother. I'm going to put the link in the description box below this video to the podcast that Helen did with James English. So I urge you to watch that one as well as this one and go over and subscribe to James English's channel. So still on Big Bro a little bit because I'm fascinated by this. I've never seen it. I know, um, I don't watch it. It's weird. Everyone says, sorry, I didn't watch it. And I'm I've like, watched I a little bit here and there, but yeah. I can't watch a full series of it. I, well, I, did a, I was a columnist for like three years and um, I had to watch... Big Brother and um, I'm a Celebrity. But it was like the first time that I'd ever actually sat down watching stuff like that because I don't actually usually like it. I don't watch TV. I watch documentaries and that's it. I'm not a fan of like TV like that. What, usually... was, what was your craziest moment on Big Brother? Craziest moment? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. You put me on the spot there now because I'm going to say something and everyone will be like, well, that was shit. Well, all right, what was the most entertaining for you or the funnest part for you? I absolutely loved Armageddon Week. That was like, it got really intense. You actually felt like the world was going to end and you had to build a raft and our raft was shit hot and the other groups were shit and sunk, so that was good because we didn't like that group. Um, and you ate bugs. What did you have to eat? Um, like crickets and stuff like that. What do the crickets taste like? Right, all right, actually. It was just a bit like, like eating your nails. <laughs> <laughs> not, that I've, not, that I've my, <laughs> not that I've had my nails for a bit, but I used to chew my nails when I was a kid. Yeah. They taste of nothing, but apparently they're high in protein. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, what else did you have to eat? Um, like, like dried centipedes. Oh, but they're all packed you do? with you um, like oh, no. Packed with nutrients. We wouldn't have any fucking choice if you start. Yeah. <laughs> I, it weren't were like a, a la carte menu and I was <laughs> like, I'll, I'll stick with the crickets, it's fine. You put me on the fucking desert for a fucking year and I wouldn't starve. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I can't really remember what else. But yeah, Armageddon was a good week. The whole, oh, this sounds really cheesy, but the whole experience from start to finish was just absolutely. Well, I did a fake eviction, which was, it was so clever what they did because I was, it was literally, I was very, very liked. I was very hated from the public. It, there was absolutely no in between, which is what I like anyway. I don't really want to be an in between kind of character. And um, 
they did a fake eviction, they threw me out. So this was probably one of the best moments because they put me in a house on my own and I sat there and I watched all of the housemates sitting there going, well, because they, they didn't let me go through the diary room, they just took me through the side. Uh, oh no, I went through the diary room, but I didn't go out to the public or anything. Anyway, I watched them all slagging me off. Uh... And then they were all sat there going, well, it was probably for the best that they did it like this for her own safety. And I was like, I just sat there, I had loads of munch. I was like, you fucking dickheads. I'm, I'm coming sat, back. I'm sat yeah. in the next room. And then I walked back in a few days later. And um, I, this is when it turned round. I'd actually got time to digest what I'd seen being said about me and get the fuck over it. Whereas if I'd been in the house and someone had been saying it to my face, I'd have been like, Rah, like you know, like clashing with them. Couldn't you bring it back up though? I brought I, I brought some of it back up, but I actually Just was the bigger person. The I walked in. I'd watched this girl try and basically really manipulate my character, which was really difficult to watch because I'm not being funny. I've got enough bad qualities that are that are real without you actually making stuff up and trying to frame someone. Yeah. That's wrong. And I watched what she was doing. I thought, you're a clever bitch, what you're doing. You really are working the public here, saying these things. Um, and then I walked back out and I just said, can I speak to you? This was a couple of days, this is a few days after I'd come in. And um, I thought, Do you know what, you're 19 or whatever she was. And I said, um, I wish you all the best. And I genuinely meant it. I thought, you're a kid and you've just sat there trying to basically tear another girl down with bullshit. If it was the truth, fine, and I'd accept it. But she actually lied about a lot of stuff that had happened. Which she I couldn't do it to your face, though. So she, she didn't say any of this to my face. Like, not because... And this is what bugged me a lot of the time. And I got all the newspaper clippings when I came out. And it was like, such a body stood up to Helen. And I was like, what do you mean stood up to me? Like, I didn't go around picking fights. I just said my opinion and people argued. And I argued back. That's not standing up to me. No. That is that I had a different opinion to the most of the room. Not that I had, no one voiced anything. Like I said this the other day in, in an interview, there was an extra 15 grand that could have been won, right? You bored in a house all day. So that was really, ins I'm not being funny, but if someone said, do you want to win 15 grand now and I've got a lot to do, I'd fucking try and win it. But when you're bored in a house, I was like, a few of us were like putting our all into winning this task and there was three of them. I'm not being funny, like, they, they don't really have, I don't think they had much money on the outside like the rest of us. And um, they all sat there and I just, like, everyone thought it, but it was only me that said it. Go for and they went, beach. we're not, no, 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 they went, um, oh, no, not even that. They went, we've decided we're not going to take part in this task because uh, we think that the money should go to charity. And I sat Fuck there. Off. And I, oh, the, <laughs> um, the fucking clip that got played of me, I could have died, was me. This is, what the, this is what they put for the trailer for the show, me going, Fuck charity. <laughs> I was like, it begins at home. But the thing is, I give money to charity. I'm not going to sit here and start trying to be like Mother Teresa. I'm not going to give not, 15 fucking like, grand though. 15 grand, fuck off. Like, yeah. I give money to donkeys. I sponsor a sheep that nearly got slaughtered. I sponsor like other people and whatever. I'm not going into that because it's no one else's business. That's no, my point. I thought, you absolutely, and I lost it. I went, oh, fuck off. And um, they were like, I beg your pardon. One of, one of the lads went, I beg your pardon, Helen. I went, you're so fucking transparent. I went, work in the cameras. Oh, let's all put it towards charity so it scores you brownie points. You're so fucking see-through. But everyone else was just going, right, Helen, just leave it. And I was like, no, they fucking pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> um, but again, on the outside, people who aren't bloody fickle could see what I saw, yeah. but other people were like, you were just disgusting, like how you spoke to those people. And I was like, well, I weren't because we were fake as fuck. That any normal person, real. any working class normal person would not be given 15 Alan Sugar, I'm not being funny, but if he went on Big Brother, would not sit there and say, he'd challenge it, he'd do the task to win the 15 grand even though he doesn't need it. Yeah. He might give it them afterwards. But the fact that they sat there saying, we're not going to participate because it, we should go, it should go to charity, I thought, even the producers have been sat there going, you bunch of fannies, shut up. Like, 
Stop trying to impress the public and just be yourself. If anything, if there was three of us, I'd have gone five grand each. Well, no, there was because obviously there was a few of us in the house, but this oh. was this was the question: who would take the fifteen grand for themselves? So we all went up into the diary room and got asked. Well, no, about few, about four of us did. We got offered the money. They asked if we'd take the fifteen grand, and everyone took it dead seriously. And I went no, like only a few of us said no, and then they released it all at the end. Like they released like what everyone had said, which caused like mass because everyone thought I would have said yeah. And I was like, no, I wouldn't do that to anyone. Even though I don't like half of the house, I wouldn't do that. Are there any other characters that you've not mentioned that you bumped heads with a lot? I bumped heads with nearly every <laughs> single person in the fucking house. Like, seriously. Any, any big, any big don't drama? Don't hold anything against them, though. Any big drama-filled scenes? Yeah, loads. The whole thing. Tons. How long have you in the house with them for? Three months. That's a long time, isn't it? Three solid months. But... I don't like I said, I don't hold anything against any of them. It was an experience. And here's the thing, I went on twice and there was two both times were very, very different. So the first time I went on, granted I didn't get on with probably 60% of the house, they were still all very interesting people with very individual char like characteristics. Yeah. So do you know what? It was still an experience. Whereas the second time I went on, total different ball game. This was a house full of people who were dying to be famous, except from one guy, um, Mark O'Neill, who's from Dublin, who me and him just like literally went like that and we're still like that now. Well, you know what like Dubliners are like anyway. He just absolutely terrorised the house. Had a good crack. It was brilliant. It was yeah. great. Um, but then we got seen as, um, what did they call us now? They actually called us something as a team. They said like we were we bullied people together and it was like, that's not bullying. It's not. It's just these people are very boring and They've got to say something though to make it sound better, haven't they, in a way? Even if it's lies, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, but that that was the difference. Mine was the last proper big brother, like proper blowing my own trumpet here, but whatever. But ours was the last the one that I won was the last true big brother after that because I was, I was like, really complained about. So the contestants they got on the year after, they really brought it all down with the personalities and it was just shit. That's why they got me on the second time because the the viewing went like that. Down. Yeah. Don't you get, like, people clicking up, like little groups clicking up against one another? Yeah, well, they said there was, like, a division in it. There was, like a like, a divide in the house and stuff. It's not done intentionally, but it no. happens, of course it does, because you kind of, you gel with who you gel with. And the thing is, like, the first time I went on, I did make an effort with everybody, but it became very, very obvious that I was not welcome around certain people, and I just took that on the chin. But they continued to say things. Like, there was a group, there was the, there was the Catholic girl, obviously, that turned out to be a slut, then there was the other girl who who I was up against at the end, who was 18, and um, two lads that were a bit like them. So I would, even though I didn't like these girls, they were vegetarian like me. So I would say to them, like, I'm making an omelette, do you want an omelette? And they'd say, oh, yeah, yeah, thanks, whatever. And I'd, as I'd walk off, I only knew this afterwards. But when I'd walk off, they'd be like, you see how fucking short shirts, uh, shorts are, fucking slag. But I, I, watched, like, I watched clips after us and I was just laughing. I just thought, you just made yourself look like a fucking moron. Should have put ham in the omelette. But I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't, I don't know. If I'd have heard them say something, I'd, I'd have spat in it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, we did loads of stuff. Like this guy like said something to me and I put... Um, Again, this was like bullying as well. I put so it was all right for him to say nasty things to me, but I didn't retaliate. I sat there laughing. But I went in the fridge and I got loads of mackerel. And when all the lights had gone off at night, I put mackerel in all of his shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and again, that was like, oh, you're a bully. Well, yeah, just a bit fishy, not, barely. Not really, because he was an arsehole and got really personal. Like yeah. he started saying stuff about how I had my tits done and. I, you know, like, that's a bad thing. I happen to think that my tits are quite nice, to be honest. But, like, yeah, he got, like, really personal about stuff. And so far, I'm just going to get personal with your belongings. It's not a very space what you've had done anyway, is it really? You know well, I, I didn't mean? really, I didn't really, it was a really shit insult. He went, go and get another boob job, Helen. And I went, 
kind of a fucking shit insults that like I will I did actually get one as well <laughs> <Did> yeah <laughs> I went up two sizes after I left <laughs> <laughs> well I'm on a similar strategy you had a cellmate in America and um, didn't you put like grapefruits and stuff on the floor for him to slip on yeah he, 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 he kept on whining he reminded you he was looking at life like but um, I was having to share the cell with him so he was a big even bigger than me even now he was a lot bigger than me and like he'd, he'd, he'd have the bottom bunk because he couldn't get his fat ass on the top bunk. <laughs> and like he just kept on whining and moaning and he'd be crying himself to sleep. And I thought, I've had enough of this. I didn't want to fill him in. So what I did was I just ended up getting loads of grapefruit and squirted it. And whenever he got up, he'd slip. <laughs> he'd fat ass and he'd go, ah, poof, and he'd knock himself out. <laughs> oh my God. He got multiple life sentences, didn't he, from yeah, um, he a did. drive-by shooting? Why what did he do? Oh, shooting. One of the bullets went through a, a girl and, and came out and took a nipple off. Yeah. Oh, my God. That yeah. is sick. These drive-by shooters, they're like, they're teenagers, but they just go out and just shoot each other's neighbourhoods up and women and kids get hit. And where was that? Arizona. Was in Arizona. Arizona. So if you come in the jail with a, with a drive-by shooting, quite often they'll give you a beat down if, if a woman or a kid gets hit. Good. Yeah, yeah I did the show. I love that. Me. Yeah. I think that's how it should be everywhere. If you're sex, no matter what you've done to offended, a kid or... Sex offender, it's KOS, kill on sight. How do they kill them? Shanks or smashing their heads into the concrete. Oh, wow. Allegedly. I'd love to, I'd love to watch that. <laughs> did you ever see I've got it? videos of it on my channel. Can you show... Oh, okay. got videos of gang it. members and guards murdering prisoners in the jail we were housed at on my channel, CCTV footage. I love it. Yeah. I actually do love that. I think it's great. I, f I find it, like, really disturbing when people, you know, I've said stuff before about nonces on um, on Twitter and people are like, well, that's a bit sick that you think that. It's, well, I'm not really because I have a kid. So, like, I, I think, like, when it comes to, like, breaking the law, I honestly couldn't give a shit what anyone's doing provided it's nothing to do with kids and you're not doing anything to old people. To me, it's... Like, do whatever you want. Nonsense, just kill on sight. And I don't mind people do commercial burglaries, like rob, like companies and that, but people sneak in people's houses. Yeah, like, it's totally different, yeah. yeah. Wild Man got some trolls on a recent podcast. He said car theft is a victimless crime. Uh, well, they yeah, get the so insurance back, don't If someone, back, if someone, if someone, if someone, someone <laughs> robbed my car, I'd probably feel a bit victimised, to be honest. Yeah. Be a bit pissed off. I don't drive, you say so. <laughs> <laughs> I just say things to wind these fuckers up anyway. <laughs> I get bored. The more trolls you get, the more viral yeah. the video goes. <laughs> and none of you slag her off, by the way. I'll be coming round. Oh, I'm used to it anyway. Fire away. It's gone quite good, actually. I don't really get much shit anymore. Might do after this show, like, but... So you won Big Brother. <clears throat> what is the prize? 100 grand. 100 grand? So did you blow through that or did you save it? Save some of it. Yeah. But I had a good time, like, as much as, like, contrary to what, like, people believed, um, we all did this, <laughs> ironic, really, we did this pact pissed up that like, I didn't want to participate in. It was, like, whoever wins takes us all to a Ibiza and gets, like, a, you know, a proper, like, swanky villa and whatever else. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Um, and I went, well, there's no point in me putting my fucking hand in. I remember I was, like, sat there going, meh, yeah, right, morning. And they were like, fucking just put your hand in, Helen. And I was like, right, okay. Yeah, I promise, whatever. Went over my head. And then I won, I thought, I'll take these fucking cretins to a beef It's not going to be swanky. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, it fucking was. Are you joking? It was like 11 grand. Fucking hell. 11 like grand. Scott Steele Hilton, didn't and half of them, yeah. half of them couldn't afford fucking flights. I was like, all right, Royal Bank of Helen here. So how long were you in this hotel? It was a villa. It was a massive villa. And villa. Big mistake, really. Like, unless you've got drivers in Ibiza, yeah. you fucked. Because it was, like, next to a farm. And loads of, like, imagine, like, you're off your box and there was, like, fucking this farm next to us. With, I'd have put them on the fucking goats. farm and stayed in the villa the, myself. <laughs> there was goats in the trees and fucking chickens in the trees, like actual pigeons. And... Uh, you couldn't get back from anywhere, so we'd get dropped off at the bottom of this bloody road, and then we had to walk up this country, country lane, and, like, you're absolutely twatted, and then you look in a tree, 
there's a fucking goat and like a, a chicken. I was like, it's fucking chickens in oak trees. Like, and were you on ecstasy as well? I won't say what I was on. It was just, it was alcohol. And acid. <laughs> Staring at a goat. Staring at a goat. Uh, on acid. acid. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, I've actually seen that on TV though. I've heard people saying that. I thought it must be on. Awesome. No, honestly, it's true. Yeah, fucking yeah. little goats in the trees. And I was like, <laughs> six in the morning, like I'm on another planet. And there's a fucking Billy's there in tree. Bez from Rapid Mondays, he's put it in one of his books. And then I thought, oh, yeah, he must have been off his fucking head. But I've actually seen it on like a, a travel show. Yeah, you know I mean? no, it's real. The guy I live with Hot Wheels, um, he said that we should get Bez and um, Sean Ryder on the podcast. Yeah, oh, I was my should. Sean Ryder. So shout out to Sean Ryder and Bez if you want to come be on. Great. We've got a studio in Liverpool now. We'd love to have you guys on, get some of your stories back from the. You could drink all you want. <laughs> No, they can't. He's Where paying. the fuck's my drink? <laughs> <laughs> I've only got water. <laughs> got any stories from the villa? Crazy from stuff that villa? happened. Not but... really, no. Not to be... I can't really remember much of it, to be honest. I was that, like... Drunk. You don't really... Yeah, you don't really remember much when you've been to a beef, do you? But, um... What clubs did you go? Oh, space. Uh, I think we went to space twice when we were there, which is obviously gone now, which is terrible. I can't remember what was the one I went. Amnesia. I was dancing to Paul Amnesia's Van Dyke till like five in the morning. Yeah, Amnesia's still Love like. Paul Van Dyke. Am Amnesia's not changed. It's amazing. Sasha. Yeah, I prefer all the. I, I was gutted when space went because that was probably like. That probably was my favourite club there, or DC 10's my favourite. Yeah. Whereas High has now taken over where space was. And I'm a bit like, hmm, not sure about this place because it's took something that was really good. I always wanted to go Cafe Del Mar, but then I found Mambo and thought Mambo was way better. Mambo's is brilliant. Yeah. I stayed in an apartment a, a few times above there, stayed in the apartment above Cafe oh, Del Mar. Oh, just looking out on the sea. Yeah, it's, gorgeous, it's isn't it? so nice to like yeah. just watch everybody like partying like down at Mambo's. Mambo's is great. It's like the best experience. Like if you've not been to Ibiza and you go in, like I'm proper trying to sell Ibiza now, but um, do the Mambo's experience. But fuck the whole going paying two hundred odd pound for a meal. Go down. The best thing I've I've ever done, especially when you're on a bit of a come down as well. Go down on the rocks with like some Coronas and stuff, and it's mint. Yeah. It's brilliant. And then they play like Pavarotti and all that kind of stuff. Like, Or eat where the locals eat, really. What? Eat where the locals eat where they're not paying like 200 quid for Yeah, the yeah, yeah. I haven't, I haven't been. I'd be through. I wanted to go, but I, I wouldn't pay not 20 quid for a bottle of water and shit. It's not like that. that like, so where Café Del Mar is, um, around there, that's where a lot of the locals eat in the rest. There's a restaurant, uh, right, there's a restaurant right. around there called Rita. Now that's like English prices. In fact, some of it's cheaper. But around that area, generally, it is more for Ibithans. Yeah. So it's cheaper. But then you move on to the other side. It's the clubs. Uh. The clubs are bastards. Like, and they look at you like shit because you wait for your change. Yeah, of course. Like, for you, change. you give them fucking like twenty euros for a <laughs> bottle of twelve euros water, and they stand there like going, and I'm like. Yeah, I'm not that off my head. I want my chair. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Cheeky bastards. What DJs do you prefer? We like like Sasha, more like John Mellow the Trent Handbag Cthulhu. House. Um probably like Martinez Brothers, Loco Dice, Carl Cox. Yeah, Cal Cox. Carl Cox. We Pete grew up Tong. on Carl Cox. Love Tong. Yeah. We were listening to Tong on the way he here. He was insane. Yeah. So I was there last Sunday. And that was in, oh God, it was just so good. It's the one where he does it with the live orchestra. Have you seen that? Yeah, I've oh, seen it. I'd love I'm to not go being, and see that. I'm, I'm not actually being like there, like physically, but I have seen it like on YouTube and on his thing, on Instagram and stuff. Yeah, can't go wrong with anything song. like that. Yeah. Anything deep, deep house and techno is like my favourite. Yeah. And like old music, anything modern, I'm like, no. Like, no, I, I hate you. pop. I hate. Garage, garage should be fucking boycotted. It's the worst music ever. Um, but yeah. Can you dance a jungle? It's a jungle. Yeah, it's hard that beat. I can't move to jungle very well. I don't think I've ever tried. Oh, I don't. No, I have actually been somewhere they played jungle in London. I probably thought I could dance, but probably looked like a twat. But I always do it, Rapes. I just sit in the corner, fucking sledging. 
It says that. I've been in the crowbar. The gay bar we used to go a lot in Arizona. It was yellow construction hat night. Wow, man was right up there with all these hip grinding hunks. Really? Him. Why not? <laughs> I love it. It's nice that guys dance. Some guys just don't even dance. Like guys who are not confident, who, you know, well, no, they're just very self absorbed. Yeah. Like you see it, like Ibiza's going a bit like Marbella, which I don't like. You can't like. go past the middle without being like this. Yeah, they're really like conscious of like dancing or they'll like stand there like looking round and stuff. Whereas that was good actually last week. So when we were in Ibiza last week, we've been like four, I've been like four times already this year. But, um, there was no phones, whereas usually everyone's like this through the whole fucking set. Yeah. And it's like, what are you doing? Like, dance. Look, don't get me wrong, I take like the odd video or whatever, but some people just stand there and do, they stand there like a fucking ironing board when you're trying to rave and, you know, you can't even move. But last week it was full of, um, it was more the Spanish and Italian crowd and everyone just danced. There was no well, one like phones. That's isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what it was like. Wild Man was on the run in Mexico for a bit and they had raves down there with the locals, didn't they? Yeah. Where was it? In, like was that. it in Tulum? No, uh, I was in um, Porto Penasco, Rocky Point. Oh, right. I was there and I was in, I was in Nogales, I was in Tijuana too. I want to go to Tulum in uh, January because that's where all the raves go, like in jungles around there. I've heard of Tulum, actually, yeah. And looks when good. I was that, was, apart from Porto Penasco, it wasn't very touristy. Porto Penasco was because it's where they have all the, like the spring breaks and the college breaks and stuff like that. And shanty towns and then like cartel yeah. stuff, all the police. And I'm the fascinated military. by Mexico. It was something that came on Twitter the other day and it was something to do with the mayor of this town had said that he would fix the road and didn't. So the fucking locals just dragged him through the streets on like <laughs> by his arms like this over the road, like face down. That's one of the reasons they like the drug kingpins. Some some people like the drug kingpins is because the government promises to build the schools and fix the roads, and they don't do it. People like El Chapo, their local neighbourhoods, all the schools, all the roads, all fixed up. Yeah, get it started. You yeah. actually tar and feather people down there, which we just to get a boiling tar, pour it on them, and put feathers all on them. Oh my God! Do they die? Yeah. You got the most violent cartels in the world in out it's of Mexico violent. now. I've seen yeah. it. What's that thing now? What they do? Oh, it was sick with the hot with the tires. They like put a tire around them. Like tire a, fire around someone. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and they put it on YouTube. And they, they're they, not asked, are they? These cartel people, they'll come and kill your whole family, torture them, and put it online and everything. Because they're untouchable, aren't they? Though. Yeah, they are. You got to watch where you're going now in Mexico too, because there's people. There's a lot of people getting kidnapped. Especially if you're white in English, you just think you're coming from well, America. Okay, no, well, I'm yeah. not going there. Then that'd be my luck. I, I, I'll take some. I good don't know. Places. They'd probably still. They'd probably have me back after a bit. Yeah, I, I know some good places you can go. Yeah, I fancy Tulum in in January. If you go to a resort in Mexico, they've got like the police checkpoints all around it, so they protect the tourists. Right. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I didn't really do the resort thing because I was in the shanty town to me. <laughs> oh, see, I'd love to do that. I like getting stuck in. You <laughs> said if Wild Man... Stuff like that. You said if Wild Man gets up to his tricks in Mexico, they'll kill him. And when I, when I went down there, they had the name for him, El Oso de Burr, because of his fighting style. And like they were running around, cartel guys were running around in jeeps and stuff. Oh, my God. <laughs> very, a little celebrity. Very first place i had to burn down the very first day i got to mexico i burnt my house ex down ex his house exploded i said <laughs> look at the frown on his face he's still fuming <laughs> i said someone to find him he can still him. smell the smoke <laughs> i sent someone down there to find him because we didn't have any telephone contact and they come back and they said all the windows are blown out of his house the locals have obviously killed him what had you done? Ah, uh, my wife, well, my girlfriend at the time was from Gobby Scouser. She's like, we got out, we were getting drunk, and we've got this place, and it was nice. And she'd had a few, and she's like, eh, I said, just shut up with you, you sound awful. And she's going on, I said, piss off. I said, can I help bring you here? It's like bringing sand to the desert. I said, go home, why don't you just go home? So I'm arguing with her. And she's like, oh, fuck you, like, yeah. I said, oh, go fucking chew a break. And we were just arguing. So we carried on drinking, and then we were all right for a bit then. 
She came and gave him a fucking brandy he shut up. So she's passing out at the bar. So we finally decided about <laughs> two o'clock it was. So we'll, we'll go back to the house then and took us ages to find it because it's the first day of being there, like you know what I mean. Finally found it, put the keys in the door, went in. We get in the house, we hadn't even unpacked or anything. And she started unpacking. I said, leave all that till tomorrow, man, fuck it. You know what I mean? I said, get your ass in bed. She goes, oh, we're having fucking none of that. I said, oh, I don't want fucking none of that. I'm trying to shoot you up. <laughs> I just want to carry on drinking. <laughs> so uh, the next minute, <laughs> I don't this, want none of that. This isn't an isolated incident. This is wild man's whole life. It's like this. Oh, my God. So we get into an argument, as per, and uh, <laughs> she gets, the, all that said, she used to stop smoking in the house. I said, piss off. So I spoke where I fucking hell want, and I threw the flag at her like that, and then she started moaning. So she gets a chair and throws it at me. And I just went like that, and it just stepped past her. I went, nah, you knob, you couldn't even hit me with a fucking chair, could you? So then left it for about 10 minutes, and she's still arguing, so I thought, I'll light you another fag out. I said, yeah, I'd try the chair thing again. And as I flicked it, it hit the floor, and all the floor went blue. There's a brandy on the floor. No, what had happened was, over in over Mexico, where we have, like, no copper pipes <laughs> coming from half a fire, they have PVC, plastic ones, that had cracked it. So it, oh, like the, the gasoline and stuff would come out. <laughs> the whole, the, the, oh you couldn't even write that shit. His whole, first day in his nice house in Mexico. The whole floor went blue. Blown the fuck up. And then the windows went pop, pop, windows pop. What did she do? Clever scouser there. She goes and gets the frying pan, fills it with water, and she tries to pull it out. The house is burning down. I said, look, just get out. No, 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 we can't leave it like that. Let's get the fuck out. So I ragged it out. And like, fucking, we sat on the wall looking at it. She goes, what should we do? I said, well, that's for the fucking fire again, won't we? She goes, well, the phone and everything's in there. I went, ah. Oh. So I, don't, I didn't know the number then anyway, I said to her. And she laughed. She goes, it's not funny. I said, it's all right. And so we go knocking on the neighbours. Um, oh, I bet they were buzzing you'd moved in. Well, I couldn't speak Spanish, I look at Spanish, yeah, but uh, they didn't understand what the fuck I was. They certainly wouldn't understand this broad scouser. So, like, in the end, I'm just like, look, look, fire, fire. So, oh, so sitting on the wall, wait, I said, oh, I'll be here in a minute. So you can put it out. And then um, 20 minutes later, and this... It's burned out. Oh, my God, this, like, 1950s thing come from, like, Bill and Ben. And it had, literally had two guys on the back of it going like this. <laughs> pumping the water and the water come out like fucking someone who's just fucking spat it's fat like that <laughs> fucking lame I thought oh my god it's not even happening this <clears throat> so yeah that was my very first time in Mexico but what happened now where did you move well the guy had, had you bought this house no we'd rented it what did you what did I'd you sell the land we'd rented it I'd, I'd just paid 750 quid for it so the guy who we rented How it from. How do you explain? To... I have to explain everything. I have to rehouse a wild man. Well, basically, what I said was, I said, look, I didn't say anything about the arguing or anything like that. It, it'd been empty for six months. So basically, I said, we moved in. We went to turn the fire on because it was a bit cold, even with Mexico. And I said, it just went boom. And he went, ah, oh, I must be gas leaks. Very sorry about that. And he, 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 he put it somewhere else. Blair. The next, oh, good man. the next several lasted a little bit longer, and then it got to the point where you was, ended up just on the beach, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. Un Why? Un unhousable. With the bird? Yeah, because they um, they they knew what we were doing. We had this operation where we were smuggling ecstasy over from Holland to uh, Mexico and smuggling it into Arizona. Right. And um, a local person out of Puerto Penasco became one of our smugglers and he got busted in Mexico City. And his mum was politically connected in this town. So she went and told everywhere not to not to do any business with the wild ones, with wild man and his, his, his bird wild woman. So from being in this like little, little local town to everyone liking her and saying, oh, then I'm coming to and all that. <coughs> you go past and people are just looking at us all weird. 
Oh no! So it got on top. Feel really a bit quick. like in, did you not feel intimidated by that? Nah, wasn't intimidated. Just for after a week, I thought oh, probably best getting out of here. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, I'd shit myself in another, especially Mexico. Well, that's what they said. They kill Wildman, but Wildman ends up running the place. There was a a, a point where um, a guy had sold Wildman a fake crack rock. Wildman's like, I'm gonna look, take me to this guy now. Take me to this guy now. And I was like, look, we've got like 50,000 XT pills coming. If you go and beat up someone over a crack rock right now, it's going to cause too much attention to us. He goes like, I won't beat him up, I won't beat him up. So I drive by, and the guy stood right next to the police, talking to a policeman. A wild man, as the vehicle's coming in, just gets his head and is like, bing, knocks him out against this post. And I'm thinking we're all going to get arrested. But the police know, wild man, down there, it's like, you know, you give him twenty dollars here, give him twenty dollars there, give him a few pills. And oh you, my god, that that's is how real. it works. Yeah, deadlines are caught with him over weekend and stuff. Really? Yeah. If you run an operation through Mexico, you got to have, be in with you've the locals. You've got to be in with the. And you, the yeah. local, like, see, you'd always get in with the all the other guys that rent the four wheelers out and stuff <clears> like that. They're yeah. always the best guys to know because they know everyone. Because they know everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The wildman built his own crew. There was people who were pretty destitute and we're trying to make money doing the little hustles and wild man enabled those people to move up from being homeless basically to having little shacks yeah they live on a beach and stuff like that and like i felt sorry for them so oh, i just give that's them nice. i give them 10 pills each and then they'd, they'd sell it for <laughs> me and then they'd pay me but i wouldn't charge them much in fact they would probably get it cheaper than most people <laughs> do you even have these wild packs of dogs and well, I'm not even tame them. Stop. Well, they have, to, yeah, loves, they have a lot of wild dogs. dogs Do they? Yeah. It's, it's like, what, like, like a normal dog? Or you mean like a stray dog? Like stray, stray dog. Like a stray dog. Man, mangy stray. Oh, mangy oh. stray. So what I used yeah. to do is I used to get like steak. It was dead cheap. And I used to feed them each day a steak. And then they'd start following you around. And then it's good because if other dogs come over night time and try and bite you, <clears> the, the, the stray dogs will go for They'd look after you, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, it was a dog handler. Now you've got the dog. You've got the dog siding with you. <laughs> dog whisperer. <laughs> you was a dog handler in prison. I was a oh, dog were handler. you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. All right. So getting back to your stuff. So you've got I was your enjoying book. Enjoying that then. <laughs> you got your book then, A Man's World. Yeah. What's that about? So. Um, it sounds very man bashing. It sounds like I'm completely against men. I'm absolutely not. Like, I don't, in fact, I probably prefer men than I do women. But um, it's just basically about setting a story straight because um, I had a really shit stigma, still do have that stigma with some people that I was a kiss and tell girl. And that wasn't the case. Can you explain what that means? Why would people classify you that as a kiss and tell girl? So I slept with a footballer um, about 10 years ago, longer than that maybe. Can we, can we name that person? Yeah, Wayne Rooney. Um, and I was happy to keep a lid on it. He obviously wanted to keep a lid on it, but it was a threesome. So the third party turned out to be an utter twat. Um, of a person. He was batting above his weight, wasn't he? His what? He was batting above his weight a bit, Wayne What does that mean? Oh, like, um, I know you usually like grannies, didn't you? But, <laughs> um, <laughs> he must have, uh, must have took a shine to younger people at that time. Um, but yeah, he, uh, so I, I slept with him and whatever and we had a threesome. Nothing to write home about whatsoever. Is that a female, female threesome? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Why? Just checking. <laughs> See, what is, I don't know it Wayne Rooney. Really it wasn't into. some big orgy. How kinky no. is Wayne Rooney? Not kinky at all, so he shouldn't cheat. Um, <laughs> not kinky at all? He's not kinky at all. So not even the anal G spot? No, just nothing. Are you joking? You didn't even know he'd come? <laughs> no. Just nothing, like, literally. It was just pointless. But if you've got two women, you'd at least have one with a strap on, wouldn't you? Yeah, easily. Yeah, no, we, no, he wasn't. Um, like a lot of footballers, he'd been told. I'm not. I don't want to talk about him anyway. So it's all boring. But he, he was. He obviously is a footballer. They get told to get with a bird young, so he hadn't shagged around. And he they had, get told to get. Yeah, with yeah. A bird. They get advised. Get, to get told by to, who? By like the football, like like federation and whatever. So like have a, have a have a bird like advised for, for public stick, relations. No, no, because it keeps them grounded if they have one girl rather than going out shagging everything. 
and getting like loads of girls pregnant and whatever else. They're advised to get what because girls keep them in. If you have a bird, you tend to stay indoors a bit more yeah. rather than going out getting smashed with your mates. In neuroscience as well, they've shown that if you have one woman, it reduces your testosterone, your regression. Mm. If you have loads of partners, your testosterone goes up. Well, I don't know what happens to him then. <laughs> <laughs> he must have grew it out of his wig. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a Wayne Rooney clip out of this. No, you can, you can play it. It doesn't matter. Um, like, it's all out there anyway. So the woman deferred. The, the, she so snitched. I got, she in, snitched. We got in the lift afterwards. Literally all happened. This is how it all unfolded. We left. We'd done the threesome. Got in the lift. Um, can I just ask first, was this a woman you knew? Yeah, I was friends you took, with her. You took uh, with like, you like, through this. I was kind of like that with her. So how do you arrange this through you or through her? Just, so it was more like through her, through her, like we'd met him on a night out and then we'd suggested it and whatever, well, he kind of suggested it. And then uh, he messaged us and me and her were in San Carlo like the week later and he was mm -hmm. like, what are you two up to? And we were like, well, we're in Manchester and he said, come over, I'm in Laura. So that all happened. But I got in the lift afterwards and I just said to her, like you would do, this can't get out, like, no one can find out, like, what I, I said to her, this can't get out, no one can find out what I do for a living. Yeah. Because I was working at the time, I was escorting. Um, so it was paid, like, he paid us and stuff. Um, anyway, I could just tell, you know, when you just know straight away, you've literally just <laughs> fucking balls your life up. I just knew from her reaction, she went, she was like this on her phone, couldn't look at me. And she was like, babe, just calm down, I won't say anything, like, it's fine, and I thought... I felt sick, I thought, I know straight away what you're going to do. So I distanced myself from her. Um, and then a few people found out around near my area. It's having the newspapers just... on the best mate, isn't it? Yeah. But, um, so about three times the papers came to me after it. So by this point, I completely cut her off because I'd met someone, I'd stopped escorting and I'd met somebody. So I didn't want him to kind of know about any of this kind of shit that had gone on. Um... And so the papers got in touch with me a few times. I brushed them off and they listened. And then it was exactly about a year later that um, the news of the world had, like, were in touch with her. But the stupid, thick bitch that she is, she told both the news of the world and the sun and fucked herself up. So in, instead of making what she could have made almost a million, she made two shape grand. papers. By the way, when yeah, we me ass on. She could I have know. made a million, and she got paid eighty grand. Eighty grand because she told what? she told two newspapers. Eighty grand. You would have got. So when I finally got in touch with Matt, Matt Clifford, asked me to come down. So let me just finish this bit off because this is why I'm going back to your point the about the kiss and tell. Winnings. I know, but going back to your question about the kiss and tell stigma. <sighs> Um, so she sold a story, didn't tell me she'd sold it and fucked off to Marbella and left me with all this. So I then found out that she didn't even have to give my name. I begged her. I was, you know, I'm messenger on Facebook. Yeah. I couldn't get hold of her. So I was, me please don't say my name. Turns out she was sat there showing the journalists all my messages, showed my face and News of the World offered me, offered her, offered her an extra 10 grand or 15 grand for my name and like and she just sat there and then she got out face but she was like this is her well how the hell are you the kiss and tell then thank you did you even get any of that money so this is what happened I literally hit rock bottom virtually suicidal couldn't come out of like my. I went to my best mate well, sorry I went to one of my friends houses a guy where you know he was in the middle of nowhere and I stayed in his spur room I couldn't come out of the spur room I literally was ill I was sick, diarrhea, fucking the worst anxiety I've ever experienced in my life. I just wanted to someone to come in and slit my throat. It was just horrific because every day I was on the front page, um, hook of this, hook of that, prostitute. And um, and then it came out, that, like I was being accused that um, she sold her body for drugs to fund a drug habit and all this stuff. And what's your James English? You said you didn't even do drugs. It was fucking horrendous, the shit they were coming out with. When, that, when I said, like I've said in like chatting to you two, there's enough bad things that are the truth about me. You don't have to make stuff up. Exactly, yeah. So why why make things worse for a person? Talk about kicking someone when they're down. And that's all that happened with that. But 
So on the Saturday, my friend, who I'm really, really grateful for to this day, but he came in the room. I'd literally not left the bed, not eaten a thing. And he went, you need to fucking pull yourselves together and stop feeling sorry for yourself because you've got a kid there. You've got no money because no fucker's going to employ you because of what the papers are saying. You need to sell your version of what's happened. He went, you're losing money every day, Helen. He went, wallowing in self-pity is not going to get you anywhere. So... Um, I listened to him, I broke my heart, I was like, absolutely, because I couldn't go near my son, I was told to stay, don't go near your son because the press will chase you, they're outside my son's school, everything. Oh my um, God, that's horrendous. It was awful, um, so I didn't see my son for like two and a half weeks, something like I that. I think that's what probably really got you. It you, killed you, me. You wouldn't have been asked about the what the gobshite papers say stuff it about was, you. Yeah, it was that. You. Like everyone else, it was the guilt. Family. Do you know what? If I'd not had a, if I'd not had a, um, I didn't give a shit about my family. I've never given a shit about my family. But my me, me son was like, because that's what did me head in. Everyone, because obviously it came out that I'd been a brass and whatever, and everyone was like, because I'd come from this, they thought nice background because my house was nice where I grew up and stuff. I ran away from home at like fourteen, like mm -hmm. I moved out when I was fifteen because of what was going on at home. So everyone was like, oh, she's such a spoiled bitch. Like, she um, she lived in this nice area, you know, because that fucking counts because you live in a nice area. Um, and she was a prostitute. Like, she's thrown it all in her parents' faces. My mum knew what I was doing. I was giving her money. And when it came out, the only thing, so I'm on the brink of actually contemplating throwing myself off a fucking cliff or swallowing a lot of pills. And she rang me and she just went, don't you fucking tell anyone what, um, that I've known about this. Do you understand? And put the phone down. That's the whole, only contact I had from her. Could be a more, bit more concerning. Like, yeah, was it? it was just like, so when people were like, Not what, much what, moral support what you've there, done really. to your parents, I was like, you literally haven't got a clue, you fucking idiots. Like, shut up, you don't know what you're talking about. But that killed me. Like, when I went to go and see my son, I was told to like, so I had to go and get stuff from mine to take down to where he was staying. And he just didn't have a clue. And I just clung on to him crying. And I was like, I just looked at his face and I thought, I've ruined this kid's life. Like, everyone's going to know what his mum's mm. done. I mean, it's not even happened. That's not happened. And thank God, touch wood, he's got some really good... He's got some great friends in his life that have always got his back. And he's very resilient. He's the most calmest, like, chilled kid ever, like... And he's very, very witty. He's very sharp with his mouth. So when someone else said something to him, he's very quick to come back with something. But he's not violent. He doesn't no. want to... He's not the type of person that get like in like like fights and stuff over it. I've said I went, don't stick up for me ever. I went, just fucking let it go over your head. And when someone has said stuff to him, he's literally just gone. You don't like my mum, go and tell her. That's what he does. And I'm like, just always be like that. It's not worth it. I said that's what they want you to do. The son's so, fucking laying paper anyway, isn't it? Oh, that's been. Oh, yeah. Ali's main ones. He want a sensationalised shit. Well, the book. The son were the ones that wanted to do my serialisation and because I didn't do it with them, I didn't do it, well, no other paper wanted really to do it and I weren't going to do it for free. The Daily Mail did me a really good coverage. But I wouldn't do it with the son um, and because of that, they literally just, again, just went to town on me, like, saying all kinds of shit. Again, brought up the whole how how vile it is that I'd come from this, you know, this lovely background and all this and then turned into a prostitute. Like, all I've ever... I was like, how... <sighs> I said to the agent... Uh, sorry, not the agent, the publisher. Obviously, they're all about money. The son of the biggest payers. Yeah. And I said, it would literally be like selling my soul to the devil. Like, I've already fucked up when it's come to trusting people in the past. I went, they have done nothing but been absolutely vile about me they've lied about me they've said stuff about me as a mother and they've always referred to me as a hooker why the fuck would i want serialization they're offering 17 grand do you know what i'd rather get the 17 grand somewhere else than do that than sit there and do an interview with people who do you know what? A few weeks later, would have just again told me, you know, you arsehole and call me all the names under the sun it's good that you got that integrity and they're the prostitutes really so I've got several questions on this. What does that mean? Prostitutes. Yeah. They prostitute themselves just to glamorise and sensationalise oh. and lie and sell people out, like yeah. Helen. So were you able to sell your side of the story to another paper? Eventually, yeah. So News of the World were the biggest payers, then The Sun, and then The Mirror. And I just said I'll do it with The Mirror, not doing it with the others. 
because of what they've said. But then the mirror screwed me over because I was not at all um, media savvy. I had no idea how journalists worked. Mm. And do you know what? I was fucking ill. I was so sick that week. Like, I wasn't myself. Like, I was like a robot. Like, yeah. literally, I was, I was kind of like, I was just existing. And I did this interview so reluctantly it was fucking awful like the pictures you can even see like in the article how much like i just it was just shit and um they asked me how many men i'd slept with and i went i don't know and they went well you've you like you must have an idea i went no i said i was an escort i said how i wouldn't know even though i didn't really do it for that long of a time i said i didn't sit there like with a fucking tally chart you know knocking them all off i said i have no idea and they said well, have you slept between like one and 50 or more? I said, probably more. And he said, 50 and 500 or something like that. And I went, yeah, big mistake. Mm, I slept with slept. 500 men for 195 pound and lied mm. about lied about the, the money and everything. I never said an amount. I never said what I got paid. I told them what I got paid for Rooney because obviously gobshite had already said. Yeah. But um, I didn't go into any of that. And that's what they put. So then the, the mirror did me over anyway. I presume that being an escort, you don't always get to, you don't always sleep with every single one of your clients. You don't anyway. sleep with every single one, but like I've said this in every single interview, like I've ever done, like or like chat, whatever. You can't, you can't kind of brush over the fact that you are being paid for that service. In the end. That's usually what the man wants. It's but, the only profession in the world, though, isn't no, it? You no, know but this mean? is what annoys me about like I've had I get more shit from I get the two the two types of people I get shit from, well, I, mainly women, uh, mainly women who have never worked, mainly women that are with rich men but actually don't have any substance themselves and don't have any they they basically don't they would they'd be fucked without like the wax. men. Yeah, like, well, yeah, a lot, a lot of wags obviously had a lot to say about me. But, um, and the men that have stuff to say, I like, I've seen them on Twitter and I look at them and I think, you look like a fucking brothel creeper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you are the type of person who goes and pays a girl for a shag and then you feel really shitty about yourself. So it's the girl's fault. But one of the cheesy ones as well, one of the, like, the ones in Camden Town yeah. for like a tenner or something. And they're always small. <laughs> yeah. They're always like Trench fucking, coat. you know, really small men and, you know, just really weedy or, you know, you, you can just tell them or like fucking really ugly and stuff. But um, yeah, they're, they're, that's usually the kind of people that like give me shit for it. But this is what bugs me and I've always said this, like... Not every single woman, but I think any woman, I think most women watching this will be in an agreement with me that women, most women, have prostituted themselves in some way or another. Now, when I say that, I mean, if you're in a job and you want to get to a certain position, women do have that advantage of, this is what bugs me about this whole Me Too thing, which, by the way, is fantastic, but some people have really abused it. Like women complaining that they've sucked a TV producer off and now they're saying they were backed into a corner. Fuck off. You wanted the job, so you sucked him off. You weren't backed into a corner. No. That's not abuse. That's not sexual abuse. What he did was wrong. He's abused his power, like his power. He's abused his station. But you've not really been sexually abused. You've not really... If, if you wanted something and you've thought, do you know what, I want it that bad, I'm going to give him an osh, then you're not really a victim in my eyes. What about someone like Harvey Weinstein who's like telling a woman, you know, we're going to have a business meeting in my hotel room mm. and he answers the door with his little towel on and then he's saying like, right, I'm a bit stressed out now, I want a massage first. And he kind of like, just, they're so scared for the careers, next thing he's naked and he's like pressuring him to do stuff. She could fuck off, couldn't she? I just don't. I'm sorry, and I'll get a lot of women probably She's screaming put at me in for that saying situation. this. I know that if I'll be honest, if I wanted something that much, I would have done it, and I'd have shut the fuck up and never told anyone I'd done it. Yeah. And if it came out, I still wouldn't cry victim because I'd done it. If I left the room and then it came out, then that's when I'd probably come forward, like a lot of women 
who clearly had a bit more integrity about them did. You know, they got backed into a corner, refused to do it, and then when it all came out and it all unfolded what he'd done... You can't say they wanted to cry wolf, can you? You can't. You know can't I mean? say that. You can, You didn't have a problem doing it. Yeah. Unless he's... Fo- like, for me, like... And I'm going to get so much hate for this, but this whatever. going to get a lot of comments, this bit. But if he's not forcing you physically, then I think that's very different. If he's basically saying, I'm giving the option to suck my dick and you suck it... That's your prerogative. Yeah. Well, with Weinstein, some of the women just left right away. That's what I'm saying. Some of them, though, they didn't think there was going to be a sexual act, and he grabbed them and they froze. That's different. That's very different. So that's rape, that's isn't physical. It? That's that's physical. For me, if someone's actually saying, like, "Well, you've got an option to do this. You can give me a massage. You can like, give, we can have oral sex. You can, you know." As soon as he's touched them, that is completely different in yeah. my eyes. Completely. It's all wrong what he did. Like, don't, don't get me wrong at all, and I have to stress what every, everything he did was wrong. But you cannot, if he's not actually physically touched you, but he's give you that ultimatum that, like, you know, me and you can sort something out if you do this, and you go and do it, you're not a victim. The people that are victims are the ones that got physically touched off him and didn't want to do anything, and the ones that actually left the room mentally scarred because of what he'd put the position he'd put. They're the victims because they've been put in a position that was completely wrong, and then they've come away from it hurt, whether it be mentally, physically, or whatever. So what's your opinion then on someone like Epstein, where his victims were underage, they consented, but they were children? No, absolutely wrong. You just literally hang him. You're a child, totally you can't wrong. consent, can you, you don't know what you're Totally wrong, a child doesn't have a, a clue no. about um, like what to say, what to do. Like It's in my book now, so I can openly talk about this, but I was abused as a child, and you have absolutely no idea. Um, you don't even think it's wrong what's happened. And they pick on children who don't have, have support. Like, the person that did it to me knew full well that I didn't ever have support from my mum and dad. I was told to shut up. I was basically, I should be seen and not heard, and that is it. So I would never, ever have gone... I used to go to, like, I don't want to say too much because I've never named the person that's done it, but they were, once upon a time, my scapegoat for getting away from what was going on at home. And then they completely... Well, this person completely abused the fact that I'd seen them as kind of my safety blanket yeah and became a fucking whatever you want to fucking call them but um beautiful mm, but um no the, just anything to do with children anything to do with children anything to do with anyone vulnerable and not in the this is what i mean these women knew they knew what was being put on the plate yeah. and i'm not saying it wasn't it wasn't wrong it was wrong but children don't have the ability to actually think, is this right or is this wrong, what's happening right now? They don't. How old were you when you were abused? I was about seven. Holy between like shit. Six, seven? About six, between six and seven. Jesus Christ. That's gross. So it's actually weird because <sighs> I only told my, I told my best friend about it about eight years ago and um, I didn't speak about it again and then I wrote about it in the book. And um, funnily enough, it's really weird how I'm talking about this because I did a podcast the other day and it's the only time I've ever sat down and actually spoke about it and I started crying, Mm. which I've never, I haven't really, I didn't even cry when I told my best friend. Like years ago, I didn't cry. Like I just... you're releasing it. Yeah, and I think because I've put pen to paper, it has become um, real and it is something that I've... I now know that I want to kind of deal with in my own time and with the right people and whatever. Um, But I broke down the other day because no one's ever actually like indirectly asked me fuck all to do with it because nobody's known. So when the guy that was doing the podcast with came out and said it, I was like, like, fuck. Like, I hate that that's even going out to the public, that I'm sat there crying about it. But then obviously I rang my best mate after it. I told her I broke down and she was like, Helen... Like, you've got to understand that's not embarrassing. You're not it's crying natural. over, like, yeah. But um, but again, it, it, I think the more, like, I obviously spoke about it then, that's obviously given me some kind of 
I don't know. It's a relief. Clarity about you, the fucking situation. And then I'm talking about it again. Okay, so you said that I had no idea it was that young. That's it's all child sex abuse is, you know, KOS, but six or seven years old. Um, you said about your family structure, this predator was a word that your family structure was such that you were vulnerable. Yeah. How does a predator get access to a child that age? Really cleverly. Like, um, one of the times that he did it, well, both times was when I was sat on his knee. Now, you naturally sit on people's knees, don't you? Um, before, so, before you could continue then, how did he have access to your family? He was a family member. Oh, I was a family member. Mm. Okay. But it wasn't, um, it wasn't my brothers, it wasn't my dad. Um, but I've just never, I've never said who it was. I've said it's an uncle. Yeah. Um, but no, I was like sat in the back of the car once. Obviously it wasn't, it was different back then, wasn't it? Like you'd sit on like people's knees in cars and shit. No safety belts and no. stuff. So I was sat on his knee in the back of the car and then it also happened um, one Christmas. I was like, I remember like I had like a tartan skirt on and I was getting sat on his knee. And then something happened, like I don't want to go into detail about that, but something happened at his house as well. Because naturally, if you're at family members' houses, you don't expect shit to be going no. on. Was there a noticeable change in your behaviour after these incidents then? No, honestly not, because I was a disturbed child anyway. I always say I wasn't a child, like I wasn't, I didn't act like a child. Um, I didn't have a childhood. Why do you think that is? My parents were very, um, very selfish. They did the whole um, Catholic bullshit, which this is why I fucking absolutely despise religion. Um, they were strict, well, they called themselves strict Catholics, like whatever that fucking means, most immoral thing you could ever name yourself. Um, but they came from strict back Catholic backgrounds and um, they fucking hated each other. They hated each other. Um, it was just a miserable, miserable existence. I used to be scared of other people's dads. If a dad was affectionate towards me, not affectionate, but if I went to someone's house for tea at school and the dad came home, I'd have a panic attack, which was really weird because my dad was the biggest bastard going and I'd have to leave. And my mum had come and picked me up and I remember once she picked me up from my friend's house. I'd seen dad pull up on the drive and I went, there was, you know, the cupboards underneath stairs. Yeah. I went in there and I was like, I want to go home, I want to go home. And my tea, I'd not ate my tea or anything yet. And my friend was like, what's wrong? I went, I just want to go home, please, me ring my mum. I fucking hated home. But I just want, I needed to get out of there because I didn't want to be around this dad. And there was nothing wrong with him. He was lovely. Like, there was nothing wrong with them. And um, what's really strange is a girl wrote to me last week who went to my primary school. And I really, really, like, I really was so grateful what, for what, what she said to me. She didn't really know me that well. But with, well, she did, I suppose she did. I said, yes, I suppose she did. But she wrote to me saying, Helen, I read your book. And everything that you've said in it made sense for how you used to act at school. But obviously children don't think about how another children's acting. No, no. She said, I used to think you the were so... The meanest anything, aren't they, Yeah, she said, I used to just think you were so weird and nasty. She said, I just... But she went, it all made sense. I was just such a... I was so confused. I didn't understand why the fuck um, people had kids. I had no idea. Because I, I just... I didn't see the point in me being there because it was just like I was just a nuisance all the time. If I didn't speak, I just wasn't wanted there. That's how you felt all the time. But well, going... fortunately, not everyone's family's like that, though. No, not at all. But there's a lot, though. There's a lot, and there's there's a hell of a lot. Well, don't speak about it. Just live with it, and it's and it's wrong, like because you do burden it, and because of it eats you up and it makes you... you yeah. You, you oh, it's, to... it's had a massive impact on him. I, after one of my podcasts last week, I'm talking to a younger girl and I've said, my door's always open. Please talk. Don't burden... Don't keep all this in because it has done something to me. It has done something to me, what my child... What, my, my, watching my mum and dad 
be vile towards each other before I run away from home and then I finally fucked off and I never saw it again. Um, but it has a knock-on effect on how, on how you are as an adult, mm. massively. The strain just stays with you and then you panic about, like, relationships. like, And it's how you put up with stuff as well. Like, I, as soon as I met somebody, when I ran away from home, I met I met my child's dad who eventually turned out to be absolutely, like, fucking awful. But because he'd shown me some kind of affection and he could be nice some days, I thought that was all okay. You know, he could twat me one day, kick, kick seven shades of shit out of me when I was pregnant. Mm. But on another day, if he came home and said, do you want a brew? I'd be like, oh, he's in a good mood. <gasps> and that was like, mm. I was grateful for that. And all along at that age, I thought I had my head screwed on. I thought I was like really streetwise. I thought I kind of knew my way about the world and stuff. And it's only now looking back and especially writing the book, I actually think like the shit I, I shouldn't, none of that was normal. None of it was normal. And now I'm on the bloody flip side. I don't fucking let anybody in anymore because I don't trust anybody. Like not because they'd be physically violent or anything like that. But like, um, I just think sometimes it's an easier thing to stay alone. Don't you feel that the guy, the horrible bastard, what did that? She deserves to go to jail. Yeah, well, I went through like oh, I went through nightmares with him. I had an injunction on him, and he got arrested like fourteen times. Is um, this ongoing for a long period? Then? Every weekend he'd kick the. So I lived in this like grotty, minging council house that was fucking disgusting um and he would kick the door off every single weekend and just like kick the shit out of me pissed he'd go from the pub come down to mine kick the door off kick the fuck out of me slap me about and then he'd get off and that was just normal every single weekend like i was in the bath once and i was going out and he couldn't stand obviously the fact that i wasn't with him and um, there was a glass table at the bottom of the stairs with the phone on it. And um, I was in the bath and he knew I was getting ready to go out because obviously around them times, everybody knew what nights were on and stuff. Yeah. And he just come upstairs with like the glass table and just threw it at, threw it at me in the bath. Um, yeah. It was just, it, that was just all normal though. It was all normalised. It was only, my one of my really good friends at the time, um, he did. He, he headbutted me whilst I was holding uh, my son, and my friend was there with her daughter. And the oh, it was horrific. The baby like nearly had a panic attack. Jesus. I think she did have a panic attack. It was she was shaking and fucking. She went pale. So we almost rang an ambulance like for the baby. Anyway, she as she was leaving, she turned around and she said, "You ever ever can speak to him ever again?" She went, "Me and you are done." She went, "I'll never." She went. She, well, obviously, she was like, "He's going. I'm going to get him fucking killed. What he's done to my daughter and all this." And um, so he'd done that, and um, that what really dawned on me was when he when he butted me, um, my friend had put my son back in the car. Now while her daughter was having a panic attack about what she'd witnessed because she'd never seen anything, my son was sat like this in the car just playing with the toys on the side because it was all normal. Mm. He'd heard it all before. He was used to hearing me cry, and like. This was all in the first year of his life. And that's why, like, obviously people do ask, would I ever have children again? And I think, well, I probably wouldn't because I've got such an amazing relationship now with my son who's now, like, 16. But that ruined it for me. Like, when I hear women who are going through hell with the partners and the pregnant, oh, my God, I am literally like, fuck him off. Like, do not let anyone ruin this because you'd never get it back. No. If someone said to me, oh, is it, it's lovely when you have a baby. It's like, I had no good memories. For the first year of me having a baby, like, everything was ruined. Everything. But have you explained to your son that what he went through is not normal? He knows that, like, I've just said he did a lot of wrongdoing and he doesn't treat women well. He knows why I, He knows why I'm so strict with him about women and stuff like that. Like, I'm very, like... There's been instances where he's got into a couple little spats with girls and girls have been going tooth and nail for him and whatever and he's come back with something and I've said, it's not worth it. 
just know your limits with a girl and just cut it off. Just cut it dead. Like, don't go, don't be malicious with a girl and stuff like that. Just, just end it. Just be like, yeah, whatever. Just be the bigger person if you can, because it's not worth it. But going back to like the jail thing, his mum begged me not to press charges, so I didn't press charges. It was different back then. They, if you didn't press charges, they didn't do you for it, whereas the police will do it without evidence now and stuff. So we went in the army for nine years. And that was it. They said, like, don't press charges and he can go in the army. And that was, like, literally probably the worst thing I could have ever done because then he went in the army and continued to do it to most of the other women that he's been with mm. since. That's not your fault, though, is it? Well, it's even, not my Even fault, if you yeah. just brought it up, you'd have to go to court and all that. Like you say, back then, you'd have to witness. You'd have to stand there. Yeah, and I, could, I to, couldn't be asked. Why would you have all? to go through that? Mm. It's like reliving it again, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to do anything like that. I didn't. I couldn't be asked doing anything. It wasn't that like I couldn't be asked. Um, when the things were happening to me and when he was doing, like... Like one of the worst things I think that he ever, do you know what? Like physical violence is horrendous. Like you get a black eye, fat lip, whatever, but you do get over that. But like one of the worst things, and I wrote about this in my book, and this is why I think like I put like down my jumpiness so much. I'm such a jumpy person. Like if someone jumps out and says boo and stuff like that, you know, not that that happens often, that sounds a bit fucking weird. But like I don't like it. Like I don't find it funny. But he, um, he like pushed a fridge over on me. And then there was jam all over the floor that had smashed and you rubbed my face in it, like completely humiliated me. Mm. And then left and then came back. And whilst I was sat on the floor, like just fucking a mess, he jumped up at the window and like went like that against the window. He went boo against the window. And I've never, out of anything that he ever did, I've never, like, even though he like did whatever to me when I was pregnant and stuff like that, I've never got over that. Mm. Like that fucking that like he just started laughing. You know, intimidated and scared, yeah. He did. Like I was scared. I was absolutely fucking scared to death because a lot of things had happened to him. Like his friend had been killed off uh, off a police car. Like he'd been run over. He was really close to his granddad, and his granddad died. And then that that's, where, no that's where it all came. Like that's up. where this is what annoys me when people do scummy things now. Like when they break the law, the fucking stuff that I see on TV, like, well, they came from a broken home. So fucking what? Yeah. My son's from a broken home. He wouldn't do, he wouldn't fucking hurt a fly. He wouldn't do anything. In fact, my son's probably put up with a hell of a lot more than what a lot of kids have put up, put up with because of me, because of what he's had to put up with because of me. And do you know what? He doesn't do anyone any harm. He's a kid, he puts his foot wrong, he takes the piss sometimes. But does he ever, is he malicious? Would he go out and rob a fucking granny? Would he go and beat someone up in the street? Would he beat someone up with all of his mates and then turn around, oh, he came from a broken home? But what 16 year old shit. doesn't get a bit lippy with his mum now? We're going to know what he I mean. don't get fucking lippy with me. No. <laughs> <laughs> he tried. He said something under his breath the other night and I had the tea towel in my hand. I just went, what? And he went, I didn't even say nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I've got something to say and say it. <laughs> No, he's dead good. He's brilliant. He's, that, that's what I mean. He's such a gem with me. He's he's lovely. Like, he'll be out with his friends and, oh, it's so tight. Obviously, because, like, I'm on my own and whatever. He'll be like, uh, my friends are all, like, married and stuff like that. Yeah. And he'll be going, what are you going to do tonight then? And I'm like, I'm just going to sit in and watch TV and get a takeaway. All right. Well, I'll... Uh, I might, I might not even be out that long. I'm like, just go out. You don't have to look after me. Like, I'm a big girl. But, like, he's so cute like that. It's nice of him, though. Yeah, like it's him. lovely of him to, like, even ask. But um, that's what I mean. It's a load of shit. That's a load of shit that you come from a broken home and this is why you're this, that and the other. It's about the parenting and how... It's about breaking a circle for me. Like, my mum and dad came from a really... No, sorry, my dad came from a very, very, very abusive background... And he didn't break the circle. I'll never understand that. I hate all this. Well, he came. That's all I ever heard when I was young. Or when I was young. And uh, I was like, good for fucking you. Obviously, I didn't say that. I suppose but... your son's friends aren't trying to hit you, saying your mum's a hussy. No. They're not like... I, I think they like went through a phase of like um, fancying me. But now I'm like just Helen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Helen, that the taxi service and... 
person that gives them all fucking sausage and burgers and stuff when they're camping out. Yeah. Wasn't Ray Rudy on the news a couple of days ago? I see. I was watching this morning all of a sudden. No, it's the um, Rebecca Vardy thing, oh, isn't it? Oh, yeah. She's a bit of a rat, isn't she, what she's done? Well, not a bit of a rat. She's what did she do? So, um feels a bit weird that I'm talking about this. Sorry, Colleen. But, um, so, Colleen Rooney has got an account on Instagram and she, so like a private account, and she's had suspicions about why the son have been getting certain information. So she's been really like clever here. And she's uh, she's blocked everyone from seeing all of her stories except from one account and put a lot of false stories up, a of bullshit that, that's not true. And they've all been leaked to the sun. So it's she's done this person, massive, <laughs> yeah, she's done this massive statement and then she's put... And I've like finally found out who this is. That and is she was clever. like, and the account is dot 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 Rebecca Vardy's account. So that just obviously blew the internet up, didn't it? Everyone's like, but everyone's saying how sorry they feel for Rebecca Vardy because she's pregnant. She's not fucking dying. I know, yeah. Well, even if you were dying, if you've been a dick, you've been a dick. Own it. I think it's clever the way she's done that, though. Really. It is clever. Yeah. But people are like, oh, she shouldn't have done it so publicly. And it's like, but it was fine for Rebecca Vardy to make her life public. So that's all right, then. People oh, people pissed me off. Oh, you shouldn't be saying this because she's pregnant. It's like, what has pregnancy got to do with the fact that you're a rat? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. So how famous is this Rooney guy if the other lady got paid 80 grand? Is the what? How famous is Rooney? He's just, <laughs> he doesn't know anything about football. I don't Have even have a TV. No. I don't watch sports, I don't have a TV. Um, <laughs> oh, he's quite big. He's not as big as what he used to be, is he? But no. he, around that time, he was like the big, he was the big one. He was the biggest not, one. Not like, not physically, but... <laughs> <laughs> I do have another question going back to that incident then. I'm under the um, mm -hmm. assumption that when the guy comes, it would end the session. But you said he didn't know he had come. So how did the session end? I had to like say, I was like, have you come? And he went, yeah, I come a bit ago. And I was like, this is a bit awkward. I'm just like doing the Rodeo on a, rodeo on a soggy sausage. <laughs> <laughs> A bit weird. Yeah, that's how shy he was. He was, really was he high or something that he could, couldn't tell he had his dick had gone down? He had coke dick or something? No, I don't think, I don't know. Maybe he was on coke, I don't know. But um, no, it was just, he was just so quiet about like the whole thing. He didn't, I don't think he wanted, whereas that knobhead, she sold this story about how like horny it all was. Listen, I'm embarrassing myself admitting it. There was nothing horny about it. It was pointless. I don't know why. I think he did it because we were there. Yeah. Do you like, think she sh seduced the whole situation to come about to make this money? No. Like, we're on a night. Oh, she's not that clever, fucking hell. She's not clever at all. Thick bitch. Went to two national newspapers and basically, so, like, lost. <laughs> we we would have got 500 grand each. Like, Max Clifford said, if you'd have come to me with the story. Well, you would have made it 500 grand each. Rebecca Lou's made a million. Through David Beckham, a million, just over a million. Shag a foot, the most famous footballs, and you get a million if you if you leak it out. Jesus Christ, we're in the wrong business. But she plan. didn't. <laughs> she didn't think that. I'm not shagging Ronaldo. You can fuck off. <laughs> get a yellow construction hat on yeah. him. He might look quite tasty. <laughs> I hope he's into fat blokes. <laughs> <laughs> they love blokes. Half of them do. <laughs> So I've read Belle de Jour's book. Have you read Belle de Jour's book? Are you familiar no, with that? No, I've just I watched obviously like when Billy Piper did the Secret Diaries of a Call Girl, which is what it's based on, isn't it? It's yeah. Like kind of based on that, but um, no, I've not read it. So one of the most fascinating things reading her book, and I'd love to get her on the podcast. We did our communication years ago on Twitter. Um, was the variety of the clients and the fetishes. Mm. Are you all right to talk about any yeah. kinky situations you experienced with what, yeah, what clients I mean, there wanted? Was, sorry, I'm playing footsie with you because <laughs> we're talking about kinkiness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, there was like, there was loads of weird stuff that were, wasn't, ne it weren't necessarily like sexual. Like, um, one of the weirdest things I think was I went to this guy's house. Um, he was like an artist or something, I don't know. 
But he had he had chairs all round these mattresses on the floor. So I walked in the room and I was like, I'm like, what the fuck? There was loads of chairs around the mattresses with mirrors tied to them. And he just wanted me to fucking basically flex on the mattresses whilst he like played with himself behind the mirror. Flex, like not flex, but like fucking crawl around and stuff. Like, and I'm just not really I'm not a very um like softly kind of kind of person like that. And I think he wanted me to be like, like crawl around like a fucking panther or something. You didn't want to put his hands on you? No. That's easy money, isn't it? Like, I'd do that. Yeah, I didn't mind that. <laughs> I didn't mind that. But he had he had bird cages all bird around cages. his house with nothing in them. And I went, Where's all the birds? And he was like, Oh, they've all died. Like sound. So I'm on a mattress <gasps> in a fucking in a house with mirrors all around it and you've got bird cage everywhere because this sounds like a really sane situation. <sighs> Bit, um, so that was weird. Buffalo Billish, that isn't it? And then um, there was one guy who this really bugged me. I was just like, no, he can fuck off. Um, he filled up a bath full of wallpaper paste. Wallpaper paste, like yeah. blue. Yeah, and he was like, we were in like a really nice hotel, and he filled he filled it all up when I got there, and he was like, I don't want to have sex with you. I just I want you to get in the bath and just splash the water, and I was like. Right, which I thought, yeah, so no care, then I don't have to sleep with you in weather. So I got in the bath. I prefer custard. I know, yeah, I wouldn't have minded custard. Bit of a, to- <laughs> bit of a toxicity. A bit of sponge. Oh, yeah, a bit of bubonge. Bit of a toxicity to wallpaper paste. I know, well, I, I weren't in it for long. I got in and he was like, that's it, like, just splash it. And I, I just thought, this is just humiliating. I went, I'm not doing it, so I need to get out. And he was like, because he was like, just splash a bit more up, like, do, do this in it. And I just thought, you're having a laugh. I thought I felt like I was being filmed or something, you know, like I went, no, I said I ain't doing it, sorry. Um, but no, there was Did they know the rules, like did you know the rules, no cameras, no anything and all that? Well there wasn't cameras then really. The camera phones weren't really out, thank God. But I'd imagine some little freak. Well, I've put a camera somewhere. Mate, some it's in the wardrobe. With other I don't know, though, because they could have made a lot of money from it, couldn't they, if yeah. they filmed it? So in Belle de Jour, you've got people dressing up in the leathers, you know, getting... Getting beaten. Getting spanked, wearing diapers, wearing nappies. I used to love that. I did actually really enjoy that. Um, when we had, I wrote about one of these, um, a certain client in the book, about how... He he used to come round again. He didn't want anything sexual, but he just loved like you beating the crap out of him, like kicking him and humiliating him and put him on a lead. Um, and I remember me and my friend watching TV, whatever breakfast TV was on. He'd come about eight o'clock in the morning before he go to work, and then um, I'd just be like uh, bouncing crumpet off his head. And, like, telling him to eat it, I'd be like, get that, fetch. And he'd do it. And then he'd just sit there like this. And I'd be like, lie down. Like, <laughs> fucking roll, roll over. And then we'd just, but he'd lose to love it. And then we'd, like, yeah, we'd just, like, throw food at him and stuff. Like he was a dog. That's hilarious. <laughs> and you said you beat him. How hard did you beat him? Ah, uh, like, they have a limit. They have, like, um, if they have, like, a, a thing round the neck, a belt. Like, they'd, like, do that, like, if it was enough, if they've had too much. But there was um, there was a certain client, he was vile, he was really, really awful. He was a policeman, shock. She didn't listen to the bell. No, he <laughs> didn't. It was horrible. <laughs> do, you know he did? do you know what he did to a girl? He uh, picked a girl up by her feet, like, and just, like, dangled her upside down and wouldn't put her down. Hell. Like, you know, just, it's weird, that, in it? It's, like, yeah, really it's weird. weird. And then I had him. And um, he used to get off on that, like um, he had the thing round his neck, and I was just like, I just like saw red. Thought I'm actually fucking buzzing off this, seeing how much pain you're in. And he was doing that, and he was going, and I was like, (laughs) 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 fucking hung my friend upside down. (laughs) Yeah, so um, yeah, there was loads of weird stuff. That was probably one of the weirdest, like the bird man, and then um, the. I don't know. I wrote about them all in the book. There's loads. And the link to the book, Worldwide on Amazon, is going to be in the description box below this video. Highly 
recommend and suggest that you go down and read and the have reviews. That a read. It's not just me pitching myself. The reviews are there as well. What about these people who are like paying on the balls, like getting the balls hurt? Or... I don't think I ever did anything like that. Did physical, like did pain, like where they wanted to like be kicked about and like choked. Um, how hard, how hard would you kick someone? You could kick them really hard. They weren't bothered. Whereabouts would you kick them? In the ribs. In the ribs. In the legs. I had a stripper girlfriend in America and then she used to tase army. You just got like a taser gun, she used to taser out of your balls and put it on a clit. She had the taser on a clit, she did it to a whole room full of people. We watched I've it. watched a porno recently actually, and they had um they had the um the is it like a cattle prod? Yeah, but this is just like the, the police version, it's a bit stronger. It's not as strong as the cattle prod. If I put a cattle prod on your balls and they'd fry. <laughs> <laughs> well man's party trick was having people see either see how hard they could hit him in the face. Or tasering him. So I'm going to keep the taser on my nipples. With. I'd love to have a taser. <laughs> They're illegal here, right? Are they illegal here? I wanted a taser sure. in my I'm eyes. Sure. But I've been told that you're yeah. not really allowed. You can get them on the computer, you know, a bit. You can buy them from I just to... love to taser someone. You know, someone's right, just well. chatting shit and just go. <laughs> Feels good, don't it? Yeah. It's you. It's you, <laughs> lad. And someone else would be fine. Like, I like pain though. It's I'm like weird. the muscle spasms. And it's, it just feels really good. Yeah, I like pain. I don't know whether I'd like that, but I love like. I don't know. I'm probably saying a bit too much, here, but yeah, I like pain. I do get why like people like pain inflicted and stuff. So far, but that's you, too far. I don't. How like... far can you go with that before you'd stop it? What for myself? Yeah. Um. Oh God. I'm you never know, so you try it, would you? What? <laughs> you never know, so you try it. Mm, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm I mean, there's a think degree of getting choked where you're just like... I I'm, don't I'm like being choked. Like See, a lot of girls like being choked and I don't. I don't really get it. I don't get the... Um, like, I like the whole... Like, I like... It's weird because when I worked, um, I was really domineering. Yeah. But you have to be because you have to make that stance... But actually, on like in a with a guy that I'm like seeing or something like that, no, I wouldn't like to be the dog. I would be if they wanted me to, but I like being the submissive one. I think because I spend my life kind of being bossy and loud and like I kind of do everything for myself. It's actually nice to feel. Like they're in charge and they take charge. Being whipped till you got welks and then they get candle wax and melt all the candle wax. And put I've heard about the candle wax. It's My nice. friend used it recently. Like um, like a, a boyfriend like poured it all down her back and stuff like that. Is it, it's nice I, don't, I don't think I've used candle wax. No, I've not. It's nice on the nipples. It is, yeah. Is it? It yeah. goes off, it goes on really warm and then just cools. So just... Yeah, I can imagine it's like a dead thing. You're like, fuck, is that too hot feeling? But yeah. then it's good. yeah. Yeah. But I was on GHB when I was doing it, and that, like, changes your tolerance for pain. You can take more. Yeah, it's like a relaxant, isn't it? I was only enough to kill a fucking elephant, <laughs> you know, <laughs> on everything. Uh, when the police uh, raided my house, there was no drugs, but they did find my vibrating nipple clamps. <laughs> they put that in the That was the news headline on one. Shut up! <laughs> the bastards, what did it say? They didn't find drugs, but there were sex toys. Like, that's a crime. Oh, you had vibrating you, nipple clamps. Why would you even say that? <laughs> you had the, a cleaner. You had the whole apartment full of them. You didn't, even live, in the, you didn't live in this apartment. It was just full of sex toys. It's a dungeon. <laughs> yeah. I had a cleaner who... Um, oh, like, so I, this, this, it was a cleaning company that used to do my house right. And this, this woman cleaned my house all the time from this company. And the next thing, the owner of the company rang me up. Bless her. She was heartbroken. She said, I need to tell you something, Helen. I went, what? She said, Claire's been round to your house and she's been, like, under your bed and um, she's told a few of the other cleaners that she's found dildos. She went, I've sacked her. She went, I'm just mortified. I'm so sorry. I went, don't be sorry. I went, I'm not ass. I said, I'm a single girl. Of course I'm going to have a fucking toy box. So I text her and I thought, I'm going to humiliate you because she thinks that I'd... Bu so she, her, she texts people, oh, I've just been around Helen's house from Big Brother. And, uh, oh my gosh, she's got dildos all under her bed and all this. So I text her saying like, are you Claire? I've heard that you've found my stash. If you need any tips on what's good and what gets the spot, just let me know. As you can see, I'm an expert. 
Come on. <laughs> like, I'm going to be arsed that you've found some fucking dildos. I won't be bothered. Like, I'll show you them. It's mad, that, isn't it? <laughs> Weird. Well, anyway, she got the sack anyway, fat bitch. So I watched a documentary about the women, the working women in Amsterdam. Yeah. And this guy, he was like timing how long it took for a customer to go in and leave. And he, he like got the average down about to so many. 12 minutes. Yeah, got down to so many minutes. Um, from your experience, how long does a guy last in the situations you were in? So it was a bit different than like, not that I'm saying that I was any different than the girls in the window in Amsterdam. It's like prostitution is prostitution. There's no point in sugarcoating it. But... Um, no, you couldn't really. I mean, it was a blessing if you did get out early. But no, they'd keep you for an hour. It'd be like a meal. And then, so it'd be like an hour having a meal. And then obviously you go to the hotel room. But I just used to talk. I mean, really, I used to talk so much that they'd, they'd be like, oh, I'll keep you for another hour. That yeah. was my game, was to do less sex and talk more. If they're full of speed or coke anyway, they're going to last longer than they? Yeah, I hated yeah, that GHB, though. Yeah. I hate to be honest. I was quite, I, I regard myself as being quite lucky because younger lads didn't take a shine to me whatsoever. I don't know why, but like other girls my age who were a bit more, I don't know, a bit more dolly, like you know, like a dolly yeah. kind of thing. They go, but they were horrible. Young lads are horrible um, when they come seeing girls like that. Most of them are anyway. They just drill them. And that's all they do. They're not actually there to do anything else. You're just there to get shagged, basically. But I did actually get older blokes, so I'd get people between, like, 35 and, like, 55. So it would be a case of... You do actually have a conversation, so... They'd actually sit down and talk to you. And, yeah. like, and you did get... I mean, the amount of them that would sit there and say, like, why are you doing this? And I'd be like, I don't want your sympathy for it, pal. I just want your money. Like, I don't need you to sit here. Like, I'm not a heroin addict. I'm here because I just want the money. Like, you don't have to. Feel don't sorry judge for me while like you got a fucking wife anyway. You this know is what I mean? I, th <laughs> that, that did bug me, that side of it. And I thought, you're asking me why I'm here, but you've just had sex with me. Yeah, yeah. Why am I doing this? Why did you ask me that? You should have asked me before that. I don't <laughs> yeah. know what I mean. I did have some, though, which actually, weirdly enough, this happened a few times, two times in particular that I remember once was one of the first experiences that I'd ever had in the industry, which I'm really, really glad this happened because I think, I don't know, I think it would have took a turn for the worse. We went to a, it was like a party and it was a lot of Glaswegians. Mm -hmm. um, and I walked in and I must admit, I did feel very, I'd never felt vulnerable in that job, but I did walk in, in that day. And after that day, I never did the whole going out in groups and stuff like that. I didn't like it. And it was basically like the guys just all stood there and they were all like, I love her, I love her, I love her. And it was horrible. I just, they wanted the floor to swallow me. Anyway, this guy come over and he was like, do you want to come with me? And I was like, yeah. And I thought, oh my God, this situation is minging. Oh no, it's brilliant. So we got in the room and he was like, I don't want to do anything with you. He went, let's just sit in here and have a drink and get some food. Mm. So we like got some food, but then he did the whole... I have no idea why you're doing this because we'd sat in there talking for two hours yeah. and everyone else was swapping. And he said, he went, no, he went, she's not coming out, she's staying here, staying in here with me. So obviously I'd sat talking to him and he was like, I can't fucking believe you do this. And I was like, why? I was like, don't. I said, because you're going to like upset me. I'm like, I don't need, because I'm going to go out and do it anyway. So don't yeah. start lecturing me about it. But, um, but listen to what he did. <laughs> he, um, he kissed me went in to kiss me and he must have been so fucking nervous. I have no idea how he did this. But fucking butted me <sighs> in my lips. There's actually pictures of me. Well, they're not, they're not there anymore, so I've not got a face. But, <sighs> but my mates always take piss out of me because this was a, probably about the third job I'd ever been on. I had a fucking massive fat lip <laughs> and I went to Tepe and Yaki. I turned up after it. And my mates were like, what the fuck's happened? I went... Oh, I went, I know I sound like one of these beaten wives that's lying. I went, but he actually didn't mean to do it. I went, he just butted me nervous. He was probably nervous. just too nervous going around he the was. kiss. He was really nervous. And then another time was um, a boxer, um, like a boxer had kind of boxed me and that girl that I was involved with with the Wayne Mooney thing. And um, again, like, they wanted to, like, swap with us and stuff like that. And I ended up with... Um, 
one of his like trainers and that was kind of that weirdly enough that was more humiliating he gave me the money and he just he just sat there we just lay there talking for two hours and um he was like I'm not touching you I want to take you out and I was like I can't go on a date with you when you know what I've done and he was like I'm not bothered he went I'm not touching you but he went I'll pay you he went because you're here went, but I'm not I'm not like going with you in that way I want to take you out but I wouldn't do it I just think that's the worst thing you could ever do is go out on a date with someone when... When they know what you're doing, you know, you go in that. Yeah. You, that's too strong. You're vulnerable. You're already basically... They've got... Uh, my ex knew what I did. I told Eventually him. Eventually, they're going to ask you to turn stop, it. They turn it. They turn Well, no, I, that's what I mean. Like, he said, if you stop, yeah. then I'd go on a date with you. And I did, it wasn't that long after that. I stopped and whatever. I did... I sometimes stopped and then I went back to it. Mm -hmm. But um, my ex did it. I told my ex the truth, even though he didn't deserve the truth, like about what I'd done for, like what I'd been done, com what I'd done coming to meeting it, meet coming up to meeting him. Sorry, the worst thing I could have ever done, because like I didn't owe him that explanation. He had no right to know what I'd been doing in the past. No. And then we went on holiday to Cyprus. He couldn't handle his booze as usual, like fucking most men. And um, he um, turned around and um, he said, "Fuck off, you brass." And I died, I thought, I was in his cousin's house in Cyprus and I thought, I, I just was like, I felt so small. I thought, I told you that because I thought you deserved to know. And then he said that when I was in the middle of nowhere in Cyprus. That's wrong, that, isn't it? So no, they don't deserve to know. The first time you ever did it, what was going through your head? Were you, were you nervous? It was Literally nothing. Like, it sounds bizarre, but I've never, I never knew that I had the ability to switch into a different person as quick as what I did when I did that. Um, it you was did it because of boredom, freedom, skin? I lost me, I lost my job. And at the time, because I was like a lot younger, I panicked because the amount of money that I owed out, which wasn't in the grand scheme of things, a lot of money anyway. It was like, I owed about £1,500 out, if that. Which at the time just felt horrific. I just I felt like I'd, I'd had my shit together before and yeah, and um, everything just spiraled out of control and like I owed money out and I didn't like it. I panicked and um, so I started doing that. I said I'll do it for a week whilst I clear my debts and whatever. And anyway, I didn't I just carried on. But the first time I did it, I was um, I wasn't nervous because I turned into a different person. Like I put this weird accent on and. Like, I lied about myself, I lied about, like, obviously you lie about your name anywhere, but you, I lied about, I never said to anyone that I had children. Well, you can be someone else, can't you? you can yeah, take I was. On character I was so, so, I was so, so false. Um, like, I, I became really girly and stuff like that, and, because I'm not really a girly kind of person anyway, but, um... I'd kind of like you'd put on like a bit of a ditzy, vulnerable act, like, yeah. and then, and that's obviously what they want. Um, but it was after I did it, like it was a f after the first night I did it. Um, I went home and I did feel really shit. But I got out. I remember I was in the bath and I got out of the bath, and the my money what I'd made was like at the bottom of the bed, and I just thought I can literally ring like three different people up tomorrow and say I've got your money. And that's how it became like it was like an addiction, I suppose. Really, like because uh, you can't say it's the easy way out because obviously it's not the easy way out. But can you? It's the easy way out for some people if you're head strong enough. Yeah. If you're doing it for drugs, if you're doing it for um, because you're being trafficked, this is why it should be legalized. Legalize um, prostitution and police trafficking. Put the put the effort into finding out the women that are doing it against false pretenses that are being forced into doing it. Women who wake up, I, I still know escorts now who wake up every single day, they go to the gym, they're healthy, they maintain an absolutely perfect lifestyle and they're fucking headstrong. They know what they're doing, yeah. the business women. That's, that's kind of what it is. Like, they don't rely on anyone for shit. They're very... They're very closed off women. They don't really take men on board. It's kind of, college, of intimidating, really. College girls at John Moore now, the university, and, that, and then, um, they'll, they'll, they'll do the pole dance and that, but they're just doing it. It's hard work, though. Like, I used to be a stripper. I did stripping. And I found that, like, there's nothing against people who strip, nothing against pole dancers whatsoever. It's a fucking hard, hard job to do. But I found it so much more degrading walking around 
trying to get someone in for a dance whilst I'm walking around like with my tits out and in stockings surrounded by girls that I don't like yeah. and whilst they're all like sniffing and whatever. I didn't want to be in that situation and I did that for a few months and then um, I just found that the escorting was easier because nobody knew about it. What do you say to feminists who say all prostitution is the rape of vulnerable women and the customers should go to prison? Well, I think a lot of feminists need a damn good shag. <laughs> that made me knock the mic off. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Try to dictate what other women do. If a woman is in charge of her own body, in charge of her own destiny, in charge of her own mind, and she's fine to do all that, and there's nothing going on, she's not doing it for the wrong reasons, i.e. drugs being pushed into it or whatever, leave her alone. And you'll find that most feminists are all fucking ugly anyway, and so they can't they can't sell themselves because no one had touched them. So they're actually probably a bit pissed off that some of these girls are actually really good to look at. Just leave them alone. Just stop. There's no such thing as like be a feminist for people who, for women that get abused and women empowerment and everything. That's great. But women who actually enjoy doing something, women who want to get the tits out in a newspaper and get paid a load of money for it, leave them alone. They have a right to do it. They have a choice to do it. No one's forcing them to do it. So leave them alone and shave your armpits. We agree. <laughs> so I write a lot about the war on drugs and the black market in drugs, which forces people to go to like shady people that could possibly rob them and causes all this crime around it. And the drug dealers are competing against each other and they're having violence against each other, all because drugs are illegal. So with prostitution illegal in some countries... Legalised drugs. Then you've got pimps beating up women. Yeah. And you've got way more violence around it than in somewhere like Amsterdam. And Where it's I, police properly. Yeah. The yeah. women are making a killing and you cannot put a foot wrong in Amsterdam. Like, if you do anything against them women, you're fucked. You can't take the piss out of them. Even if you take a picture of them, they throw, like a, they throw a cup of yeah. piss on you. Yeah. And plus, you know, they're clean too because they've got to get checked, haven't they? Yeah. All the checks, the health checks, yeah. yeah. Prostitutes are cleaner than, like, you're going out on a weekend and, like, men are shagging birds for, like, what? Because the girls cashed a few drinks off them in a booth. Yeah. You're probably going to go and get blue waffle off them. You're not going <laughs> to... You're not going to get them off the girls in the windows or girls on websites because they're all vetted. Blue Waffle is thinking. <laughs> I don't know why I use that awful <laughs> So I've got a serious question then about prostate milking. You mentioned about... A serious question about <laughs> prostate milking. You mentioned about these guys, young guys come in, they want to just drill the woman for the entire hour or whatever. Yeah. Are the techniques... Women use to make guys come quicker in that yeah, situation. Yeah, massively. Like you talk dirty, like just talk dirty. You obviously like you'd try and do other stuff to them to make them obviously come quicker. Finger up the ass works for me. That's prostate knocking. <laughs> that and playing with my balls every turn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's loads of ways. I don't know. Some men have. Some men are very calculated. They go in and they know what a woman's going to do. And you, that was like your worst kind of like, like if I st I'd go in and I'd start waffling on asking them about the day and they'd just be like, yeah, do you want to get a shower? And I'd be like, mm. Business then, is it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's not the chatty type. <laughs> but yeah, um, there's loads of ways of doing it. My, my thingy was to just talk away to them and just watch the clock tick. There was a guy in Ireland who used to take an egg timer in with him and actually turn it on. It didn't go in his bum? No, he was weird. I couldn't see him. Like My friend saw him. He used to want to get breastfed, get which breastfed. I just think, I think that's really nonsense. I think that's pedo like being a paedophile. Yeah, he asked if he could get breastfed. So would you have to Like find an actual baby. I don't mean like stuck on her tits. I mean like he wanted to lie across her and just like like make fucking baby noises on her tits. Because there's some people who get in nappies, aren't they? And they get the nappies changed. Even they soil the nappies. Never experienced anything at that that's, level. I think that's paedophiles. No. If someone came to me with something like that, I think I'd punch them. Yeah. I think that's uh, I think that's something that's wrong extreme, up here. Yeah. There's gotta be something wrong there's with you. Something like 
I don't know, like, everyone has, like, a vulnerable side, I get that, and girls like kind of acting the vulnerable one and, like, like being a schoolgirl and all that, that's all kinky, that's, I don't think, I think that's all, that's all sexy, it's like the naughty schoolgirl or whatever, but that, um, reenacting that you're a baby, what the fuck's a baby got to do with, like, sex and stuff, even talking about it, it just makes me feel weird, to be honest, but yeah. I no, there is, there's one in there. Um, isn't the one, it was on TV. Oh, sorry, I've got an itch here. Um, there was somewhere in Warrington that's like a crash for adults, like with big cots in it and stuff. A whole crash. I saw one documentary and the woman said, you know, there's paedophiles out there and they come to us and, yeah, we dress in the school girl outfit and all that stuff and we believed that by having sex with these paedophiles... It stops them from going Yeah, out. yeah, do you agree with that? It's, no, um... No. See, like, but there's someone on Twitter that you might have seen and he's called a non-touching paedophile, right? And he's very honest about what he is. I don't ever feel sorry for him and I could never feel sorry for him. Non- I wish Say that some... again, what he's called, what? He's called, like, the non-tou- non-touching paedophile, so he's never committed a, a crime. Pedophile. He's never committed a crime and he's never downloaded porn, <sighs> children... But he's he's admitted... That he can't be with a woman, he's got um, sexual tendencies to want to be with a child, but he would never touch a child. And everyone's telling him that he needs to kill himself. It's on Twitter. You know. Everyone's telling him. But do you know what? I read the comments, I've seen a few people tweeting him. And obviously I went on it because of what was being said. And for a second, he's explaining that he was born like this and he's felt like this since being a child, that he knew something was wrong. And he was like, I want help. But I just think that's where you should be allowed to either be put somewhere where you can never come out and you can't be walking around near children or you should be able to be injected where you're put to sleep. Maybe chemical castration. Yeah. Yeah, because he wouldn't have the thingy then, would he? took that drive away. It's like a, it's like a dog, isn't it? Yeah. You take the drive away to want to do anything. But I didn't like him saying, I'm not, I didn't feel sorry for him. I don't even empathise with the situation. But I thought that is fucked. You know, he's being so openly honest and he's... He's got a bit of a loon to put that on fucking anything though. He's he? doing it because he's, he said he's trying to spread awareness that um, they should, ha- he wants to be kind of locked away. It's got to be analysed. It isn't. It's got to be analysed. Because he's never committed a crime, they won't do it. Ah. Uh... So what is he up? He is up against something there, isn't he? Because he's not physically done anything, and he said he never will. But he said he's openly honest about what goes on in his head. So it's a really, it's a really, it's a horrible situation. It's I don't know. It's a really. I think people like him need to be analysed so that society can come up with better solutions. Yeah. Better. better yeah. But on Twitter today, we spoke to um, Stinson Hunter, the paedophile yeah, yeah, hunter. Yeah. He uh, possibly going to get him on the podcast. He'd be good. What, what do you think about paedophile hunters? Great, I think they're good. I mean, there's, have you seen the one with the little ball guy that was trying to meet is um, it, a fourteen-year-old? Is it an American one? No, no, it's here. Um, you'll no, see it. You'll definitely no. see it. But they were paedophile hunters. Um, no, I think it's good. I think it's great what they're doing. Um, I don't understand how they do it. I have no idea how they do it. It's very clever how they do it. But. Um, no, I think it's great what they're doing because not a lot's being... It, it, I think the justice system, anyway, like, let's not go too much into it because I think it angers everybody, the justice system here. You would get more for fucking, you know, being found with a bit of fucking weed on you or found with some, like, pills or coke or whatever than a guy who has done something to a child. Yeah. Yeah, we the police, hate police, the fucking police are like... The police have been known to do things and just get away with stuff. Um, I don't know. I just think that's just bad. But that's why, like, yeah, I would like I wouldn't like to live in some countries where the laws are so extreme because I'd probably be the first to get killed, to be honest. But um, I do think that we should take a leaf out of our something. Like I watched something the other week, and it was in Saudi Arabia. The guy was in court. He had sexually abused a little girl. The court sentenced him to death, but it was fucking genius what he did, what what happened. So he's in court one minute. They take him onto the streets of Saudi Arabia. There's a big announcement that this guy's been found being a paedophile. 
they just fucking boom, 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 boom. And everyone cheers around it. And I'm like, I think I could watch that. No, Fine. I, I, could, I couldn't interview it, it a pedophile, man. I'd, I'd end up killing him. Yeah. But, I, but in Saudi just, Arabia, you've also got, it's the death penalty for sorcery. And they cut women's heads off to this day for sorcery. What sorcery? Witchcraft. Witchcraft? Yeah. If you get caught stealing too, they cut your hand off. So if they said you were behaving strangely and they thought you were a witch, you could get your head cut off for sorcery. No. That's just like... So, that, so it's, it's extreme in, in, in... Most Northern girls would be fucked, let's put it that I'd, way. I'd be fucked. I'd be on God of Quark. Man, it, it'd be like a William Wallace retake if I was there. No. No, I couldn't live. I feel so, so sorry, and I don't mean this in a condescending way whatsoever. Um, I feel so sorry for women who... They don't have a voice. I don't even know why they're here. And you know what? I was if they're happy with it, fine. But the, you can't tell me that some of these women are happy being in these religions where they can't say shit. The other voice, like, they just choose not to use it. Mm, they choose to be there. I think they're too there. scared to, though. I think they're... Um, yeah, the ones who have to cover the faces and all that, it's just fucking annoying, isn't it? I just think, like... Why exist? If you're happy doing it, then fine. But, like, come on. Like... I see, um, I was going on the, um, I was on the plate, going on the plane, and there was a Jewish family, again, nothing against Jews whatsoever, like I know a few Jewish people that are lovely, and I personally don't think this would happen in their family, and the woman was like struggling with like five kids, I think it was five, five or four kids anyway, he fucked off. He walked up the stairs. Her. She's like this with a fucking pram, like, like trying to like, she was like going like, Trying to, well, she had something anyway. So she was trying to carry something whilst having a baby and trying to keep these other kids in line. And he was a mile ahead. Some some and people just, just think, backdated where just he's probably the worker provider and she's the baby maker and that's it. You know what I mean? But that's what a lot of the religions are, though, isn't it? I don't like any religion for that matter. Like I always, some dick said to me the other week, I was saying something about. There was something to do with um, how an, an animal was being... Oh, it was just horrific. I'm against all han animal abuse, like whether it doesn't matter if it's religion or whatever. But this particular thing was to do with... Um, it was in a halal slaughterhouse mm -hmm. and some dickhead wrote underneath, like, I was like, all oh, fucking religion should be banned. And he kept goading me. He was like, say it. He went, say Islam should be banned and watch. And I was like, I've just said all religion should be banned. He went, you're backpedalling. Say Islam should be banned. I went, Islam and all fucking religions should be banned. I don't agree with any of it. It all brings, like, hate and... Fucking... Some religions don't because then you've got, like, Sikhs that are the most loveliest, bloody, calmest of people. But then I just think, why can't everyone just be in an agreement that there is something up there but we don't know what it is and just fucking get on with life, stop believing? For me, I say, like, if you have a religion, there's, then... You're basically believing in Father Christmas. I don't believe in God or anything, to be it's fair. A, but that's I believe just my there's something. Opinion. I we, believe that there's something powerful up there, but I genuinely believe not one single person on this earth fucking has any idea. They're what all it is. strange in the way, aren't they? I mean, you got people who worship elephants. <laughs> I mean, See, I'd worship an elephant over a fucking <laughs> invisible guy. Oh, I'd kill. A, I'd kill a person before I'd kill a dog. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. I'd kill, a, I'd kill a person before a slug. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't kill any animal, I wouldn't. So in conclusion then, we've had some serious moments today and we've had some laughs. And it's really inspirational that you've gone through child sex abuse and then this horrible relationship where you were pregnant and you said what happened there. But you've gone on to become so successful as an author, winning Big Brother... A lot of people have said to us, why haven't you got more women on the podcast and things like that? And you're just like such a strong character and an inspiration to people. Young people who are going through some kind of abuse, what what would you say to them now to inspire talk. them who are watching this? Like, I think the best thing you could ever do is talk and not be afraid of thinking that someone's not going to believe you. Like, I genuinely thought no one would ever believe what was going on in my life. And I couldn't have been I couldn't have been more wrong. Someone will listen to you. Everyone will probably listen to you. And 
just believe that it isn't your fault. Just know that none of it's your fault. If there's something happening to you and you're young, it's because someone is taking advantage of how young you are because they're meaningless and they're pathetic and they need help. Well, they need more than help. But get help. We won't talk about the negatives. Get help. And there is light at the end of the tunnel. And there are good people out there. Don't get wrapped up in, like, a world of thinking that everyone's bad because they're not. And that's what I did. And I, d I didn't trust anyone for years and didn't tell anyone for years. And that that then scars you. So the younger you talk about it and the sooner you talk about it, then the better the outcome, if you can say that. Like, you're going to heal a lot quicker. And I think that if you are going to talk to anyone before you tell your mum and dad and everything, I think you're best talking to your best mate at, at the time, you know. Just, yeah. Just get it off you. I think it's getting it. If you were it and you don't say anything, that's what the, that's what's going to fuck your head up. It does. It scars you and then you don't get over stuff. Like, it has a, it has a knock-on effect. It's like a domino effect. Mm. Loads of stuff starts to go wrong because you start to believe. If you don't do... If, you, if something's happening to you when you're young, then and it's by a man or by a woman, whatever, then you become a person that accepts something that is wrong later on in life. You become a teenager that accepts wrongdoing. You become an adult, a younger adult like what I was, that accept, accepted abuse physically, mentally. Mentally, for me, was even worse. You accept it all because all of a sudden you start to think that any bit of affection is fine, even if it's the person abusing you and abusing your trust and abusing your body or whatever. Um... So you need to nip it in the bud whilst you, if you are young and you're watching it, then try and sort it out whilst you're young and get the help that you need. Talk to your friend, talk to your teachers, schools are good and stuff like that. I think that's such a powerful message to end this on. So Helen's socials are all in the description box. Anna Buck is, she said she's going to start a YouTube channel here soon. Maybe that's up already by now. So please go down, support Helen. She also said she's going to start her own podcast, so we'll see how that goes. Are you familiar with the Arizona prison handshake? No. Shake hands and go like that. And then bump fist. Well done. Thank you. Come oh, on. that was so <laughs> stiff of me to do. You Can we do, do that again? Do again? Yeah. What do you do? Uh, do you want to try well, man? Nailed it. <laughs> 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 Cheers out there. Please put what you thought about today's video in the comments. Take Thank care. you for having Thank me. You. No welcome. bad insults about this lady, though. I won't have it. <laughs>